It is Tuesday, November 9th. This is Jaguars Happy Hour. And now, a guy who gets his hair cut once a week just for the scalp massage, J.P. <laughs> Shadrick. It's all I have left. <laughs> Welcome in. It's Jaguars Happy Hour. It's Tuesday. It's November 9th, as Joe said. My name's J.P. Shadrick. We've got a busy show, busy couple hours, in fact, for you here on Jaguars Radio. Jaguars analyst Jeff Lagerman coming up shortly. We'll recap week number nine, the Jaguars over the Bills, 9-6. to six. A defensive gem for the Jags this past Sunday. And then we'll look ahead to week 10. They'll need another one against the Indianapolis Colts, who can run the daylights out of it. Up at Lucas Oil Stadium, that's in week 10. Head coach Urban Meyer joins us on the Urban Meyer Show. That's at 5 o'clock on the Jaguars radio network. Now, of course, the Jaguars get the win 9-6 to over the Bills. Defense dominated the day, dominated the top-scoring offense in football, held them to just over 300 yards of offense this past week, took the ball away from them three times with a couple of interceptions and a fumble recovery. The offense struggled in that game against the Buffalo Bills, though. They dropped some opportunities, one of those in the end zone. Luke Farrell had another one. Just did enough to get into field goal range three different, well, actually four different times. They missed a field goal in a sequence. We'll talk about that later. But they made three field goals. They did just enough to get the win. The defense was key. Urban Meyer Monday, though, met the media, and, yes, he loves the locker room. And that's a team that I made a comment in the press call, I'll fight for this locker room against anybody, anywhere. I mean, I, these are good guys that are fighting for each other. You know, you saw, it might be fun to go watch, but Dan uh, Arnold made that great catch on the sideline. And it's Smoot, Josh Allen, um, and a handful of grabbing them and picking them up. And, and it was, uh, I love being around these guys. Je- uh, Jeff Logman joins us now, Jaguars analyst. Yeah, loves that locker room. It's a good group. We saw some video after the game of you know guys coming in off the field, picking up Urban, in fact, in the hallway right outside the locker room, and everybody's excited after a winning result. That's what winning does, right? Yeah. Uh, you, you love the locker room when you win, you hate it when you lose, and that's just kind of how it goes. But uh, I thought that was a fantastic win. It was a game that nobody gave him a chance, including me. And it was a game that there was major concern that this team could get run out by halftime. I mean, that's, that's how many people thought it would go. And for them to play and outperform the NFL's top defense the way that they did to hold a Buffalo Bills offense to season lows, essentially in every important category, which is points, yards, and also the opposing quarterback rating, which has been an area of concern, major concern for the Jaguars that was outstanding. Yeah, especially with the week prior. Geno Smith starts 14 out of 14 and, and had his highest career completion percentage. Just yeah. stood back there all day. They didn't let Josh Allen stand back there all day. They uh, dialed up some pressure on him. Well, I, th- I think I think the, the result of Seattle, I think, motivated this football team. I mean, how could it not? When, when Miles Jack is up at the podium in Seattle and says that this was embarrassing, humiliating, whatever term was that he used yeah. – I mean, that was that was from the heart. And so when you have something like that happen, I think you take a good good hard look at, at what you're doing and make sure that you can kind of clean it up. But yeah, I, I thought it was great. I mean, it, uh, uh, and the best thing was that, you know, when the game is starting, you know, they're getting ready to start, you're looking around in the stadium, and all of a sudden you're seeing the bright blue and red. I mean, there was a lot of Buffalo Bills fans, and it's typical. I mean, Bills fans will travel, and and credit to them. Uh, The Bills Mafia is awesome. And they were in the stadium early because they don't know anything else to do, right? So the Jaguar fans a little bit later, more casual, get in their seat. But when it came down to the importance, I mean, the Jaguar fans were so much louder than the Bills fans, and it was – it was special. I mean, it's, it's been a long time since that stadium rocked like that now, and, and it was good to see and it was good to feel. Now, I'm going to be careful with this statement, but I know it's one game, right? One defensive performance. Overreaction Tuesday. But uh, it was a shade of 2017. They did that all season in 2017. Pressures, takeaways, 
you know, had an attitude about them. This felt like a little bit of that. They've got to go prove it again down the line. Yeah, and yes. that's the hard part. It's a step in the right direction. Yeah, that's the hard part. Is it okay? You did it once. Now you you prove that you can do it. Now mm-hmm. you need to do it again, and that's that's not easy to do. Now, two takeaways on the season that were both interceptions, and then all of a sudden you end up a game against the number one scoring offense in the league, and you get three takeaways, and you get your season's first forced fumble, which uh, I don't think it was like intentional. Smoot didn't tackle Josh Allen and try to rip the ball out. It doesn't matter. Just the though. contact hey, itself knocked it out, and Perfect. that's what it takes sometimes. Really had another one too, but it was um, it got yeah, yeah got, got recovered over yeah. by the Buffalo Bills. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it was a. A strong performance, and there were so many players that played well across the board. And, you know, Josh Allen's kind of leading the way and gets a lot of the talk, but there's many other guys. I mean, heck, Taven Bryan, who has been widely criticized and and uh, hadn't had a very productive career yet, all of a sudden he has a two-sack game. And uh, uh, the one sack that he had was a great pass rush and does a nice swim move on the guard. The other one probably not so good because he didn't go where he was supposed to go. But it worked out good, and and he got the sack. And so, uh, I mean, when when and I thought the, the 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 defensive line group as a whole played really well, and I kind of expected them to play well. I thought that the quarterback play might be able to cover up for it a little mm-hmm. bit because Josh Allen has has got the mobility factor. But the Buffalo Bills offensive line was a little bit in in kind of flux because they were missing two starters. And uh, they ended up kind of mixing and matching some guys at some positions, and they didn't play very well up front. And uh, you can say either that, or you can say that the Jaguars played better up front. I, I'll, I'll say both happened. Yeah, that the Bills weren't a great offensive line, but some of the Jaguars' defensive front guys played their best game, uh, best games. Taven Bryan was one, and I thought Roy Robertson Harris played his best game as a Jaguar yet, even though the numbers weren't staggering from him. It was a different looking, feeling defense just from the way it was called, I think. You know, you had Josh Allen back in coverage. We've seen that some this year. He had the interception. But a lot of times there's pressure coming from different areas and then guys are stepping back in coverage. And especially against a, an offensive line in Buffalo that had some guys out, that's a lot of moving parts to, to keep up with. Well, and, and – uh... The Buffalo Bills love and then what their core offense is all about is three wide receivers, 11 personnel. And 11 personnel, just to simplify, it means one back, okay, and one tight end. So that's the one and one. And then the unspoken number is always the wide receivers, okay? So 11 personnel is the one tight end, one back, three wide receivers, which is Buffalo plays all the time. And so it's a little bit easier, I think, to maybe dial in and, and maybe expand some of the things that you want to do because they don't run a, they don't run four tight ends. Hell, they only got two tight ends on the <laughs> roster, and they right. elevated one from the practice squad just to have two for the game because one of them was a scratch from injury. So, I think that made it a little bit easier. But, but I, I'm a big believer, and that's you want to make sure that you're simplistic enough to where your team can play fast and they can be locked in. And I thought the the biggest, I would say the biggest, I don't want to say the biggest credit. One of the biggest changes that they had from previous weeks was the lack of substitutions or the minimizing of wholesale changes in personnel groupings. For example, in Seattle, there was two instances of 12 men on the field. They're trying to shuffle defensive linemen and on and off the field. And in this game, you didn't see a lot of that. And I think because they didn't do a lot of that, it allowed the players to really hone in, lock in on what they're supposed to do. Because perfect example, JP, if I'm a linebacker mm-hmm. and I'm Miles Jack and I'm, I got the green dot and I'm trying to get everybody lined up and, and communicate with everybody, but then you add to that, I'm trying to figure out, do we got 11 on the field? Do we have 12 or do we have 10? <laughs> right. And I'm trying to figure out who's running off and who's running on yeah. and which guy do I need to talk to. If I'm doing all that, here's the thing. I'm not getting us lined up in where we need to be. And on top of that, I'm not thinking about what I need to do against what I'm seeing out of the opponent. And so simplifying it a little bit by not having a lot of these substitution things, I think, helped them a little bit. 
Let's get a little more into the Jaguars' Josh Allen day. Well, we heard him after the game, of course, you know, talking about, hey, he heard some of the noise, the Josh Allen versus Josh Allen conversation. He had his career day, eight tackles, all solo, a sack, two tackles for loss, an interception, his first career pick, and a fumble recovery. Josh Allen, I'm just seeing it before he goes and does it. Got to make those plays when my plays, you know, when my numbers call. Uh, I mean, for me, I visualize everything. Uh, I'm a visualized person. Uh, I like to speak plays, you know, I like to speak greatness into my head. So, you know, when it happens, I'm not surprised. You know what I mean? So I know I work my butt off. We all work our butts off in practice to get, you know, to get right for this week. And uh, I feel like I had a great week of preparation. I feel like I was in a great mindset. And, you know, got to go out there and play. This season has been building, especially the last month, it feels like, for Josh Allen. You know, he had the tackle for loss down around the goal line, which was a big play on a first down play at another TFL in the game, and then a sack, all that stuff. But the last few weeks, week five, seven tackle game, half a sack, couple quarterback hits. Week six in London, seven tackles, quarterback hit, pass defensed. Week eight, Seattle, six tackles, couple of sacks in that game later in the game, but he had four tackles for loss against the Seahawks, and then it builds up to this one. This is, you know, we, he's been to a Pro Bowl. We get it. He's a, a really good player. Now, coming off the injury last year, there was some. Can he get back to that form? He's back to that form right well, now. Well, let me let me let me add this too. He, he's not doing it alone. Okay, uh, the goal line play that you just talked about that we just showed, first mm -hmm. and goal from the three or whatever it was, and he has a, a TFL. Gotsis gets great penetration. Okay, go to last week's sack that he had against Seattle, and you have great penetration on a TE by Taven Bryan that allows a downhill pass rush game move by Josh Allen. So, I mean, he's not doing it alone. I mean, other guys are playing well, too, to, yeah. to, that help him. And, uh, but that's what happens most times, right, on good defenses. That's what you want. You want good performances building and, and making other performances better. And uh, Josh was really good. The, the most impressive thing about Josh, JP, is I, I call this football IQ, okay? And to, to, to try to break it down for you, Josh is incredibly smart and aware on the football field. And what awareness does, for example, when the play snapped, Josh sees things faster than other people. And so since he's seeing things faster than other people or recognizing things faster, it now allows him the advantage that the physical reaction is happening sooner. So people say, gosh, he's so quick. Well, he's quick because the mental IQ is high, and so the body's moving faster, quicker than other people. And on top of that, he's got a great physical skill set. I mean, we know he's, you know, he's super athletic and he's fast and – and all of those things, but but the football IQ is what makes him what he is. And there's other players that we've seen in the past that have played here, that we watch on other teams, that they just don't have the awareness. The ball runs by him, they don't even know it. Yeah. But with Josh, he's got the football IQ. Another guy that, that has it too that's playing well is, is Dwan Smoot. I mean, Smoot plays hard every week. The, the stop, the cause fumble that he had on Josh Allen, uh, we're going to actually draw that up uh, on yeah. uh, Jaguars yes. All Access. Love okay? it. Yes. And the reason Film that room. was a good play is the Jaguars are playing man, which was not something they played a lot of in the game, and it was a, a short situation to where, hey, look, you got to get a stop. And uh, critical moments where they're playing aggressive, they're playing man, and they've got everybody in a gap. Well, the one guy that kind of has two gaps on that play is Smoot because if the read option comes, he doesn't have a single responsibility. If the, if the back gets the ball, he's got to tackle the back downhill, closing on, on the whole formation. And here we're looking at it now. So if the back got the ball, he was responsible for making that tackle. Josh Allen keeps it. Guess what? He's responsible for making that, too. He made and it. It was yeah. a great read yeah. and a great reaction. And then to add on top of that, a sure tackle. And the athletic skills to, to you know, because Josh tried to give him a little fake and go underneath of him. And, and he didn't. He just he was on top of it. You know, so love the way that Smoot's playing. And 
Uh, he's been playing well as, as as well as Josh Allen has been playing over the last number, you know, three, four, five weeks, whatever it's been. I think Smoot's been been playing well as well. Quarterback hit in six of the seven games that he's played this year for Dewan Smoot, and a sack in three of the last four. I mean, that's he's there you go, getting hot. Three, three go. sacks it's in consistent. the last four games. I mean, that's about as as good as you can get. And uh, and I think the coaching staff. And here, here's the reality: when you have a new coaching staff, sometimes it takes a little bit of time for them to figure out mm-hmm. what they got. I mean, I, I I even think like James Robinson when this coaching staff comes in here, they. They don't really truly understand what James Robinson is. I think that was clear in the offseason training camp, too, when they're trying right? to – Yeah, absolutely. And then all of a sudden, then they see him in a game, and they're like, oh, uh, this, five and a half a carry? This we'll guy, is, he's different, right? <laughs> yeah. And, and I think the same thing is, is true sometimes when, when you got a guy like Smoot and that you're trying to understand, you know, what kind of a role he can play and how good he is. And the, the one thing I've always appreciated about Smoot, he plays hard, and he plays hard every week. And as a coach and as a fan, I think that's, that's all you can ask is to have a player that's committed, that plays hard and shows up every week. And that's exactly what Smoot does, and he gives you his all. I mean, Rudy Ford, we haven't even talked no, about him. I know, right? I mean, well, where, where the hell did he come from? <laughs> I mean, it's incredible. He's a special teams guy. That's why he came here. And then, hey, let's put him in. He's a great special teams coverage guy. Let's put him in on nickel, see what he can do. And I mean, it's his they, third career start ever. He's been in the league for a number of years now. Oh, he's what, fifth year? Yeah. And, like, fifth okay, year let's start him. Out of Auburn. And he's got kind of the measurables of a safety. He's six foot, 210. And, uh, I mean, in fact, that's kind of where they had him on the depth chart. And so the season starts out. You know, they try uh, Tyson Campbell at nickel, and they decided to leave him at the corner spot. And then they put Trey Herndon in there, and then they try Chris Claybrooks, and they try right. Nevin Lawson a little sure, bit. Sure, sure. <laughs> you know, they're like, they're, they're still looking. And, and all of a sudden, you know what? Hey, uh, this, this guy that's playing – Special teams for us, you know, does a really good job on special teams. You know, let's see what he can do playing defense. And he has been – he's been solid. It's been great, but he's been really solid. And uh, and I lo- like the way he has been tackling because the nickel – remember, when you go to nickel, you're taking a linebacker out. So, yeah, in a right. lot of formations, the nickel has to tackle. Uh, whoever plays nickel ha- has to be able to say, I'm not scared of contact – And I'm willing to take on some big boys. Aaron Colvin told me one time, if you're playing nickel, you got to have some dog in you. You got to have some dog. I think Rudy Ford's got some. He's got a lot of dog in him, and he's got a great. He's a he's very physical, and that's what I like about him. And he's a really good tackler. And here's the crazy thing, JP. He's still making tackles on kickoff coverage and special teams. (laughs) Of course he is. Yeah. Of course he is. They didn't take him off of all of them just because he's a starting nickel. He's still playing some of the core teams. Can he get open on, in routes? I'm curious. Well, he can't. No, let's no. not do that. Okay. Let's not let's, put let's, too much okay. on his we'll plate. off there. Uh, let's uh, come back in a moment. And speaking of offense, we'll hear from Trevor Lawrence, Jaguars quarterback on the injury and the ankle issue in the game last week and his thoughts around that after he spoke after the game last week. PRI Productions, the official event production company of the Jags, has everything you need to bring your next idea to life. Visit PRIproductions.com. And it's Jaguars Happy Hour on the Jaguars Hard Rock Sportsbook Digital Network. Jaguars Happy Hour is brought to you by DreamFinders Homes, homes that fit your lifestyle. And by Baptist Health, changing health care for good. Hi, I'm Tito Beveridge, founder and master distiller at Tito's Handmade Vodka. In 1997, we became the first micro distillery in the state of Texas, and we're still making the same smooth stuff after all these years. We're still cooking in a pot still, working with our dogs by our sides, having fun and tasting batches, and I'm still wearing the same hat even after all these years. Head over to titosvodka.com to learn more about what else we're doing the same. Cheers. 80 proof Tito's Handmade Vodka, distilled and bottled in Austin, Texas. titosvodka.com. Headquartered right here in Jacksonville, CSI Companies is one of the fastest growing workforce solutions companies in the nation. As a proud partner of your Jacksonville Jaguars, CSI has the resources necessary to scale with any enterprise, yet they are small enough to maintain the agility, personal service, and remarkable experience they've become known for over the past three decades. This is your workforce and your business reimagined. Visit CSICompanies.com to learn more. 
Hey, Jaguars fans, it's always game on with Duncan's $2 medium hotter iced coffee Tuesdays for rewards members. The NFL season is more than just what happens on game day. That's why Duncan wants to get you through the game week two. During football season, the best call is always Duncan. Whether it's the morning after a late night game or getting hyped for the week to come, pick up a cup of your favorite coffee and tackle the day with Duncan. Join today and order ahead of the Duncan app. Jacksonville Jaguars run on Duncan. Exclusions apply. Participation may vary. Limit one per week a tropical smoothie cafe one taste and you're feeling good now smiling wider now seeing brighter now bucket duncan now namaste and now popping a wheelie now living lighter now you're on tropic time now and on mondays try our jaguars duval delight smoothies for 2.99 and you're roaring louder now end zone dancing now sipping spirit now you're on tropic time now at Tropical Smoothie Cafe. Great teams leave it all on the field. But with the powerful towing and payload that Ford F-150 delivers, you can take it all with you, too. No wonder Ford F-Series is America's best-selling truck 44 years straight. The 2021 Ford F-150. Built for greatness. Visit your local Ford dealer or buyfordnow.com. Based on 1977 to 2020 calendar year total sales. Your family isn't like anyone else's. Your home shouldn't be either. At DreamFinders Homes, you can build the home of your dreams in one of their 30 plus communities in Northeast Florida. Choose from luxury single family homes or maintenance free townhomes from the 200s. DreamFinders specializes in homes built to fit your lifestyle. To find out more, call 904 738 0165 or visit dreamfindershomes.com The station that the Jaguars listen to 1010XL Home of the Jacksonville Jaguars Yeah, no, I thought it was a lot worse than after, you know, some time and we scanned it and it was good and then put a little bit of weight on it gradually, I was feeling better and better give it a little bit of time um, it helped, but Man, it was, it was cool to see CJ go in there and be ready and just threw a couple great balls. That one to Ag was a freaking dime that he threw. So that was, that was cool to see him just go in there and, and be ready. That, of course, is Trevor Lawrence. He is the Jaguars' starting quarterback, and this is Jaguars Happy Hour. J.P. Shadrick with Jeff Lagerman. Coming up at 5 o'clock, it's the Urban Meyer Show. Head coach Urban Meyer joins us on the Jaguars Radio Network. Hard Rock Sportsbook must be 21 and physically present in Florida to wager Concerned about gambling? Please call 1-800-522-4700. Presenting sponsor of the Jaguars Digital Network. That one made everybody hold their breath for about 20 minutes or so of real time, I think. 15, 20 minutes when Trevor Lawrence took the uh, hit from Walker Little's back foot being pushed back and got the ball free and then hit his ankle. Down he goes. He can't even walk by himself up the tunnel and... It's like, oh, no, this is not <laughs> happening, right? What in the yeah. world now? Yeah, it was uh, – two thoughts were kind of going through my head. First one, obviously, was, oh, no, uh, you don't need this happening to your rookie quarterback because you don't want to lose any, any, any minute of development in the first year. And number two is, I was like, God, Walker Little gets his first start, yeah, and all people right. are going to talk about is that he got pushed back and he stepped on the quarterback's foot and he hurt him and he took him out. I mean, that's not the way you want to start your right. your NFL career's first start out with. But uh, but thank goodness he came back, and so now it's just a it's just a, a an afterthought now or a side note. I mean, from the way he went off the field with athletic trainer in one arm and team doctor in the other to Coming out, running sprints, going back in the game, uh, that's that's pretty tough now well, for the quarterback. We were we were in the in the radio booth, you know, me and Tony and Frank and, and Dave and Cush and we're sitting there and at first somebody throws out their Achilles and I was like, Don't say that. No. <laughs> Don't you well, dare got a team full say of doctors that. in the radio booth now? <laughs> I didn't know that. So uh so yeah, I mean fortunately Thank goodness. Yeah. Uh, but I mean that's because at first you could, we couldn't see the replay to where you saw Walker Little stepping on yeah. the ankle. Mm-hmm. So now you're thinking at first that you know when a quarterback plants that back foot, that yeah, that's right. 
you know, right. so uh, – and then we finally kind of saw a different replay that showed where he got stepped on. But, yeah, that was a, that was a pretty scary moment. And, and I, I, what the, the best part for me is it okay, he's getting carried off, helped off the field, goes right in the tunnel. I'm guessing they went right in and take an x-ray. Maybe not. I don't know. Because it's right there by the end of that tunnel. Yeah, it's really close. Uh, and there, every NFL stadium has to have x-ray facilities. And so did they go in and double check? Or did he start to feel better as he got up in there? But Well, he said it got scanned, so I'm guessing which that's Which is what x-ray. Yeah, yeah, you're right. not going to do right. anything, but yeah, it's, yeah. it's going right. to be an x-ray. All right, so the best part is he comes back and he wants – he wants <laughs> – he put me in, coach. Put me in. <laughs> And so <laughs> he might have a few more choice words than that, but you know, no, I don't know. I who knows me, with him? You no, never no, know. I think Trevor's probably pretty clean, but uh, <laughs> but I appreciated the toughness factor of uh, of your quarterback. I think thing. there Look, were some choice words coming from the stands, though. I'll say that they wanted him back in, in the at the time. Patrick Mahomes, okay, yeah, not having a great year, but one of, one of the things that we've learned about Patrick Mahomes over the last couple years tough as nails right was going to play through some things and last year he banged up at the end of the exactly. year here we go right and that's yeah. that's what's required to play the position you have to have a toughness factor and so uh, you know and you, you figure that he's tough because he played at Clemson he was a running quarterback but you sit there and you go well you know I mean look this is the NFL it's a little harder a little bit more physical but to see him come back and say put me in I mean that's okay now you know you always wonder and you always think you know, is our quarterback tough? Because you need to be tough to be able to play the game. And uh, I don't think there's any question. He's he's a tough guy. And, that, and when your quarterback is tough, that permeates through the rest of the team. If this guy's out here on one leg, I better start catching the football on the other end. There were a couple of instances where well, it yeah, didn't we, happen the oh, other yeah. day. We're here. Oh, gosh. throws right, and Bethard makes a throw in the end zone. A couple other like that. But, hey, in a tight game – like if you know it, you're hoping you're going to be in a lot of times, there's not a lot of margin for error yeah, you for gotta, this well, team. You got to make, make some plays. Got to make plays, and and quarterbacks got to make some plays too. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Marvin Marvin Jones Jr. had a great kind of double move on the corner, a little stutter go late in the game. Stutter go. Okay, which would have put it away. I mean, you score a touchdown in a game like that, it's like okay, here we go, victory. Yeah. And uh, Trevor overshoots him, and. Uh, you know, so and then some of the short stuff that you know that he can be a little bit better at. So you know, and that's both ways. Then yeah, yeah. it works. It works both ways. And and the more experience he gets, the more anticipation he has, the more accuracy he will have. And and he's admitted that something that's something that he needs to work on, which is the accuracy. But part of the accuracy is just not the physical throwing of the football. It's the anticipation, and to and the mental mechanics that you go through before the decision to let the ball loose happens and that will that will speed up for him i think the jaguars missed james robinson last week carlos Hyde was uh, in the game as the starter 21 carries 67 yards 3.2 average and fumbled the football away down in the red zone as well yeah and uh I mean, the reality is that uh, james robinson is a, is a he's a top five back in the league i mean that's and i don't think there's any question about that and i and i will tell you this his importance to this football team having a young quarterback might be uh, maybe greater than any running back around in the league. So, you, know, you, you need him. I was a little disappointed, I'll tell you that. I'll be honest. I didn't like the fact that they were working him out before the game to determine At whether all. or not he's going to play. You said just forget it. No. Uh-uh. Just sit out. I mean, look, it, when you have a player that, that's, that's that has that importance level to a team, that it can't be a game day decision. It can't be, you know. You you gotta you gotta. It's got to be a little bit bigger picture than that, and uh, you know. And when when he comes out to do his thing, we're on our radio booth, so we get to see this. And it was after literally after watching for just a minute, you could tell that he was not ready. And uh, so, but nonetheless, I mean, he didn't play, so I mean, it all worked out, but. You know he and and hopefully he'll be ready this week. But here's the reality: mm-hmm. if if it's a question, you got to remember, there's a lot of football left to be played. Eight games after this one, and he's your he's your best offensive yeah. player right now. So you got to say when you when you start trying to make a decision, you have to remember those things. 
Plenty ahead on Jaguars Happy Hour. When we return, we'll take an early look at the Indianapolis Colts. It's a good team. The record is 4-5, and five, but they have some things they do very well. And we'll get on both sides of the football. A little later, we'll get into the Baptist Health Injury Report, take a look at the AFC South standings. Then at 5 o'clock, it's the Urban Meyer Show on the Jaguars Radio Network. This is Jaguars Happy Hour on the Jaguars Hard Rock Sportsbook Digital Network. Jaguars Happy Hour is brought to you by TIAA Bank. Turn potential into progress. And by Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. Hi, I'm Tito Beveridge, founder and master distiller at Tito's Handmade Vodka. In 1997, we became the first micro distillery in the state of Texas, and we're still making the same smooth stuff after all these years. We're still cooking in a pot still, working with our dogs by our sides, having fun and tasting batches, and I'm still wearing the same hat even after all these years. Head over to titosvodka.com to learn more about what else we're doing the same. Cheers. 80 proof Tito's Handmade Vodka, distilled and bottled in Austin, Texas. titosvodka.com. The Land Rover Defender story began with the simple thought of creating an exceptionally capable off-road vehicle, becoming the go-anywhere, do-anything, all-terrain machine. Today, there's a new Land Rover Defender, the toughest and most advanced Land Rover vehicle ever. From the beginning, Land Rover knew the new Defender was capable of great things. Motor Trend's 2021 SUV of the year is just the latest example. Test drive the new Land Rover Defender today at Land Rover Jacksonville on Atlantic Boulevard or go to LandRoverJacksonville.com. Land Rover, above and beyond. So, it's happy hour. Let's talk whiskey options. Have you tried Citrus Distillers? Have you tried Citrus Distillers Limited Edition 2021 Barrel Aged Jaguar Whiskey? Did you know it's only available for a limited time and manufactured in Jacksonville? Yes, Jacksonville. I said local whiskey. Try it on the rocks or in a Jack's Whiskey Sour. Citrus Distillers Jaguars Whiskey is available at local liquor stores, restaurants, and the Jaguar Stadium. Drink local, Jacksonville. Find recipes and events at jaguarswhiskey.com. Jags fans, did you know you can ride your bike to every Jaguars home game at TIAA Bank Field and Valley Park it for free? That's right. Stop by our bicycle check-in tent sponsored by Alert Today Florida near Gate 1 at TIAA Bank Field. An on-duty Zencog bike professional will park your bike and ensure it's secure during the game. When the game is over, return your claim ticket to pick up your bike. For cycling safety tips, visit alerttodayflorida.com. Remember, alert today, alive tomorrow, because safety doesn't happen by accident. Ready to take the next step toward the ultimate you. Dr. Patrick Basil, official plastic surgeon of the Jacksonville Jaguars, presents the Ultimate U Sweepstakes. Enter for a chance to win a cool sculpting treatment package valued at $4,500, plus a Jaguars performance training session. Receive your free customized treatment in a relaxed, modern, patient-centered environment. Learn more and enter the sweepstakes at jaguars.com slash ultimate U or call 904-222-6262. Terms and conditions apply. No purchase necessary. Jaguars fans, here's a great way to pay with pride wherever you go. Exclusively from TIAA Bank, the Jacksonville Jaguars Visa Debit Card comes with a fierce look and fantastic features, along with the convenience to make purchases online or at millions of locations worldwide. And it's yours, free, when you open a Yield Pledge checking account. Order yours today. Visit TIAABank.com slash JagsCard. TIAA Bank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC, and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Mike Dempsey and Fat Tony, Jaguars today. All Jaguars, all NFL, all the time. 10 to noon weekdays on 1010XL. We're not going nowhere. Uh, you know, we got to build. We're going to build on this. You know, we're not. I'm, I'm, t- I'm glad. You know what I'm saying? I'm not up here saying, oh, we got to do better. We got to. No. You know what I'm saying? When we are on our stuff, you know what I'm saying? We can be a really great defense, and it showed today. You know what I'm saying? Our, our defense line can go against any offensive line any time of the week. You know what I mean? Any offense, stop any run, stop any pass, and, you know, we did what we needed to do. And hopefully we got to capitalize this, get better um, Tuesday or Wednesday, and uh, go out here with the mindset we got we to gotta beat the coach and get better and uh, win this game. 
That is Josh Allen, Jaguars defensive end and outside linebacker after the game this past Sunday. A win over the Buffalo Bills with the defense dominated. And welcome back. It's Jaguars Happy Hour. Jaguars game day broadcasts are presented by Vice Star Credit Union. J.P. Shadrick with Jeff Lagerman. How about the threads on Josh Allen you know, there? He's um, got, the, got the teal jacket going. Man, I mean, sporty. Sporty, Josh. Josh is uh, – He's kind of he's kind of one of the most interesting men in the world kind of look thing going on. Because I'll say, you know, if anybody knows style, it's Jeff Lagerman. Yeah, well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Just say, yeah, okay, yeah. maybe I'm wrong on that one, right? Okay. Yeah, I, I'm, it's, I it's am, not camo. I am the no. fur, furthest thing from being knowledgeable on style. I this is uh, now yeah, yeah if it's camouflage or <laughs> orange you know or a mix of those two camo you, I know you know all about I know that camo there's all kind of different types of camo yeah, but we'll I, save that for the outdoor show I, I I do okay but I I know camo best <laughs> let's take a look at the Indianapolis Colts and the Colts are four and five you know they're trying to uh, you know walk down the Tennessee Titans to the AFC South that's not going to be so easy the way the Titans played we'll get to the uh, the division results a little bit later. But the Colts, you know, they've got a running game, and their offense ranks right up there among the best in the run game this year, fifth in the National Football League in rushing offense, 12th in total offense, um, third downs, middle of the pack. Scoring, though, they're top ten in the league. They get they get points. They can put it in the end zone. Jonathan Taylor is a big reason why, though. The running back out of Wisconsin – He's the second leading rusher in the NFL right now behind Derrick Henry, and he's a little over 100 yards away from surpassing him. Henry's out for a while, and let's hope this is not the week he overtakes Derrick Henry in that department. But this is Jonathan Taylor's world. Carson Wentz just seems to kind of be living in it and managing it, I think. That's the goal, at least, in Indianapolis. I don't think they want to put it in Carson's hands all the time. They don't have, like, the – the stable of playmakers outside they might have had in the past in Indianapolis. This is a running offense, and it's Jonathan Taylor's world. Well, and they've got a, a very good offensive line. And if you put too much pressure on Carson Wentz, he can make some throws that just make you go, what are you thinking? Yeah, right. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, Josh Allen had one this past weekend that he threw to Josh Allen that was highly questionable. He kind of throws it up. Under heat, had to run, duress. Yeah, oh gosh, and he just kind of, around, without right? looking, throws it in the general direction of where his guy was And Wentz be. had one of those in overtime a couple weeks ago. It was terrible. Uh, and what is going on? It was terrible. What are you doing? I know the exact one you're talking about because that's the one that I saw. Oh. And it was literally, he almost lost the game for him, right? And that's the, the it was literally almost lost the game for him. And uh, he, it's amazing to me that, just a matter of a couple years ago, he was being talked about about the next great quarterback. I mean, literally, the heir apparent to to the Peyton Manning, Tom Brady in the National Football League. And then all of a sudden, he just he just falls off a cliff performance wise, and he's not able to get it back. And, that did lose the game for him. That, that led to the game-winning field goal. Okay. okay. Yeah. And then yeah. uh, so he has an opportunity to reunite with his former coach in Philadelphia, That's Frank right. Wright, who is now the head coach of the Indianapolis Colts. And, I, and, it, and it's, a, it's the perfect fit for him. You know, look, I hope he does well. You know, but not this week. You exactly. know, but I hope he does well in his career. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, I don't ever root for anybody to, to to not have great success unless they're playing with the Jag, playing against the Jaguars. But I mean, look, I want him to do well. But I mean, it's a, it's a great opportunity for him to go to where he has uh, where to well, number one where he's wanted and number two where he's comfortable and that's a good place for him. He's still got a ways to go and he started the season out. He had ankle. And foot injuries, I think it was, and it was it, you could tell he wasn't running a hundred percent, and he still doesn't look back to a hundred percent because the Carson Wentz that uh, that I've seen run healthy runs better than how he's running right now. Well, that's been the story of his career: the injuries, he had the ACL a few years ago, and then that changed everything with Foles coming in in Philly, and then that that's been the story of his his career. You touched on it, though. The offensive line's where it's at. I mean, that left guard is, we know that, from the, the last few years. Quentin Nelson, that's a handful. There's not many offensive linemen that literally that I would say are the worth the price of admission in football. 
And I think Quentin Nelson is one of those guys. Uh, I mean, he is uh, – and I, and I haven't had a chance to watch him. And I'll get I'll get a, a, a chance to watch a lot of film on him this week. And then and, and he was I look, banged up early in the year. Right? I, yeah, he missed yeah. some time. Yeah, I don't remember if it was a back or or something. He had something going on, so he's just getting back into the flow of things. But when he plays, there's when he played and he has been at his best. Who would you compare him to? Larry Allen, Steve Hutchinson. Oh wow! Okay. I mean, they, these are Hall of Fame type guys now. I mean, that's that's kind of where he plays at. I mean, he's that good, big leader, physical, can pull. Yeah, which is he can move. That's the thing. Which three hundred and thirty pounds, three hundred and thirty pounds that pulls like he's a you know two hundred ninety pound guard, no problem. So and <laughs> he screams when he's oh, yeah. getting ready to hit guys, but. Yeah, that's, that was a couple of years ago when he was a rookie, I think it was, and he was on a pool play. And he's, yeah, I think that was a fake video, though. No, that they, was not. They took it back. The Colts were like, yeah, we, we faked it. That was not real. That was real. It was not real. Get out of I, here. I'm serious. For real. Uh, it's for real. Not the video. That was for, for real. Yeah. The hollering. Correct. No, that was not fake. Not, it was fake. No. We'll look it up. I don't believe that. Let's take a time out. We'll look it up. No, we'll, we'll come back. No, no, no. no we're not going to take a time out yet. We'll, we'll – um, We'll look that up in the next break. I want to do that. Oh, we will, because I think I'm you're, right. You're, so, like, my what I'm thinking of Quentin Nelson. I'll put a dollar on it. It's all fake. I'll put a dollar on it. I'll bet you a dollar. Okay, fine. Is all that right. allowed? I don't know if that's allowed. Uh, defense. Let's move along. Colts defense. Okay. Uh, this is a group now. Uh, we I like their coach. Faced off against the Bills last week. Another really good defense. You know, statistically, eh, whatever. 20th overall. Uh, pretty good against the run per play. You know, but they take the ball away more than anybody in football. 20 takeaways, 10 fumbles, 10 interceptions, and it's Darius Leonard punching that ball out. Four different forced fumbles this year for him, the linebacker. They've got a, a few different guys with the interceptions. They're they're a solid group. They have a, a good off a good defensive line with DeForest Buckner, a former first-round pick up there. And you got Leonard back there behind him. This group can get it done. Yeah, it, it, I, like I said, I'll, I'll start with the, with the coordinator because I think he does a really good job, Matt Eberflus. I, I hope I pronounced his name properly because I want to make sure I give him the respect that he deserves. He's been, I think, a, a constant for the Colts, even though that they've had some change with their offensive coordinator because, okay, they got a coordinator that's now the head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles, I believe. Sirianni came from the Colts. So they have been wildly consistent. And at some point when this new – era and popularity of of getting the next great offensive mind to be the head coach somebody's going to look at Matt Eberflus and go this guy has been wildly consistent and successful as a defensive coach we need to take a look at him but he's not fancy but he gets guys to play at a high level for him and uh, I think that's the thing that I appreciate most about him and uh, this defense has some good football players on it too don't don't you know take my thoughts on that differently as to thinking that he's making magic out of nothing because Darius Leonard is arguably the best middle linebacker in football. He intercepts the ball. He causes fumbles. He makes tackles everywhere. He is an all pro. He is all world. And <laughs> he's got a guy playing up in front of him, DeForest Buckner, who they were able to get in free agency, giving up a number one pick to the San Francisco 49ers. And Buckner is a stud. He's six foot six, six foot seven, you know, two hundred and ninety five pounds, three hundred pounds. He's long, he's strong, he moves well, he's got uh, uh the ability to anticipate, and him paired with Grover Stewart, who's the other defensive tackle, they're a pretty good group. Now, they're a little young on the edges. You know, they got a first round pick, Quiddy Pay and Al Qadim Muhammad and uh Kimiko Ture, Ben uh Banagoo, Banagoo, I think is how you pronounce his name. These guys are all fairly new to it. And then they've got a second-round pick out of Vanderbilt that is playing defensive end. So they're young on the edges. But the, the two guys in the middle now, Stewart and Buckner, they're, they're for real. Yeah, that's where it all begins there. Uh, you got your wallet? Might want to get it out. <laughs> Did I lose? You lost. Are you uh, sure? Yeah, because that was against the Jaguars. He pulled against Barry Church. Yeah. And then they asked about it. it they, you know, they put it out there as a viral video. This is back in, gosh, 2018. Okay. 
and it was Nelson pulling and running over Barry Church, and it had him screaming on the play. So they asked him about it, and uh, Quentin Nelson told reporters that Tuesday after that he did not yell on the play. He said it got pretty viral on the Internet, which was cool. I wasn't yelling, not on that play. I don't know how it got amped up. And the Indianapolis Star reported that the Colts video department added screaming into the video clip for fun. <laughs> so that's a wow. George Washington coming my way. All right. That's uh, about that. That's so wrong, though, that they did that. <laughs> See, I, I'm just telling you what happened. Well, so. I mean, I can tell you this that video kind of helped build the legend. Uh, yeah, that right? might have been part of the idea. I mean, I don't, I don't know. know. It worked. I mean, you know what he needs to do? He needs to start yelling and screaming like that all the time on the field. <laughs> Maybe if he's going to play like that, then they might want him to do that all the time. Yeah. Uh, let's come back in a moment. We'll get to the injury report. We will go around the AFC South, look at the results and the standings. And all of that coming up. We'll also hear from Urban Meyer again. If you're looking for the MVP of the truck game, then look no further than Ford F-150. Loaded with impressive capability and designed to dominate work, play, and everything in between, this truck makes tough look easy. No wonder it's the official truck of the NFL and proud partner of your Jacksonville Jaguars and it's Jaguars Happy Hour on the Jaguars Hard Rock Sportsbook Digital Network. Your family isn't like anyone else's. Your home shouldn't be either. At DreamFinders Homes, you can build the home of your dreams in one of their 30-plus communities in Northeast Florida. Choose from luxury single-family homes or maintenance-free townhomes from the 200s. DreamFinders specializes in homes built to fit your lifestyle. To find out more, call 904-738-0165 or visit DreamFindersHomes.com. Hi folks, Frank Franzi here to tell you where to find the most authentic Southern Pit Barbecue in all of Jacksonville. That's right, Bono's. For 72 years, Bono's has been smoking real pit barbecue right here on the First Coast. Smoked for hours, served in minutes, and always cut to order. You can find Bono's locations all around town and on game day at TIAA Bank Field. Bono's is the official barbecue of the Jacksonville Jaguars. If you want great barbecue, head to Bono's today. If you don't see a pit... It ain't legit. At ViStar Credit Union, you inspire us to deliver on our promise, to do good for our members and our communities. That's why we offer more banking options, like better rates and no hidden fees. We also give back, donating several million dollars to hundreds of nonprofits each year. Better financial lives, stronger communities. ViStar Credit Union. Do good. Bank better. Visit ViStarCU.org slash join. Insured by NCUA. Are you suffering from shoulder pain? If you have clicking and popping in the shoulder joint, persistent pain that intensifies with use, an inability to lift your arm over your head, or a tingling, burning sensation in the shoulder, elbow, or wrist, waiting to see a doctor could make your injury worse. Baptist Health and Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute have innovative and effective treatment options available right now to relieve your pain and restore your mobility. Don't wait. Call 904-JOI-2000. Hard Rock Sportsbook is coming to Florida. Join the Seminole Tribe of Florida and Hard Rock for safe, trusted, and completely legal sports betting. Go to hardrocksportsbook.com to get all the latest details leading up to launch. Play remotely from anywhere in Florida, including on your phone or computer or in person at Seminole Casinos. Want great promotions like free bets, odds boosts, and bonuses? Hard Rock Sportsbook will have all your favorite bets and promotions. Hard Rock Sportsbook, the best place to be a Jaguars fan. Coming soon. Must be at least 21 and physically present in Florida to wager. Concerned about gambling? Please call 1-800-522. 4700. Great teams leave it all on the field. But with the powerful towing and payload that Ford F-150 delivers, you can take it all with you, too. No wonder Ford F-Series is America's best-selling truck 44 years straight. The 2021 Ford F-150. Built for greatness. Visit your local Ford dealer or buyfordnow.com. Based on 1977 to 2020 calendar year total sales. When Jaguars news breaks, you'll hear about it first on 1010XL. Home of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Smoot and Josh Allen, I'm going to kind of clump those guys together. Josh, at the end of the season last year, was 240 pounds. He's now 260, over 260. You know, our, our, I just love bragging about Schlegel and Fergie and our sports performance team. And same with uh, 
much smoot we put him on a four day a week lifting he's getting stronger during the season usually the wear and tear especially linemen go in reverse our guys are getting stronger and it's a credit to most importantly the players but also that group of people that we put together we're a stronger team right now than we were early in the year which that usually doesn't happen that's head coach urban meyer Earlier this week on Monday, you'll hear more from Urban coming up on the, you guessed it, the Urban Meyer Show on the Jaguars Radio Network. That's at 5 o'clock, 10 minutes from right now. This is Jaguars Happy Hour. I'm J.P. Shadrick. That's Jeff Lagerman. The Jags get the Indianapolis Colts. And veterans choose VA for the benefits you've earned. Visit choose.va.gov. Well, you know, uh, there's all this re- uh, officiating talk going on around the league today <laughs> after Monday Night Football last yeah, night. Yeah, well, we're going to see that guy in Indianapolis this weekend. Yeah, Tony Corrente. You know, it, it, I didn't watch it when it happened, seeing all the the videos and stuff afterward. That, that's been a, my- it's a new emphasis this year, though, the taunting rule. It's been a, a topic of conversation all year because mm-hmm. it just adds something else to the plate. Uh, official, officials have an incredibly tough, tough gig each week, obviously. But sure. Um, it just adds I didn't see it by the way. I was play. I was already in, in bed. That's past my bedtime, but I I saw the replay of it. And um, by the way, for people that were wondering, Cassius Marsh. Yep, he was here. Was here. Mm-hmm. Okay, his father is Curtis Marsh, who played for the Jaguars back in the early days with me, and he was a very talented young receiver. And uh, so anyway. Uh, in my in my mind, and I'm a, I'm one of the biggest proponents of taking taunting out of the game. That's that's not taunting. Taking and, the the actual taunting out, not the call of taunting. You want it to be called. Yeah, I want it okay. to be called. I'm, it. That's what I'm saying. But I'm saying yeah. what he did in that game was not what I consider taunting. I think taunting you there has to be a proximity to another person that's kind of in your face. If you're standing. 20 yards away from a group of people and you're putting your hands on your hips and you're just kind of get them the old stank eye. That's not taunting. Okay. Come on. And then here's the thing. If that was okay, taunting, throw the flag right then and there. Yeah. Don't wait until you kind of lean into them anticipating a little contact and then throw your flag. The flag should have been thrown long before any contact with the official happened. And it's not like Cassius Marsh initiated the contact. He's not even really paying attention to where the, the official is at. The, the official kind of leans into him, maybe bracing for contact. And, and for whatever reason, Corrente's kind of got a beef with this player for what he did. And he's just you know waiting. Oh, yeah, you bump into me or you touch me. I'm going to throw my flag after you staring down the sideline. I mean, come on. Yeah. Well, he claimed That's after the game terrible. to the AP reporter, the pool reporter, I don't care what he says. To whatever he says is a bunch of garbage. Okay, well, total garbage. And the league, the league you. needs to have a conversation with him, seriously, because BS. if that were reversed, if a player backs kind of leans into an official, I mean, it it, it would be highly criticized, yeah. right? Oh, sure, yeah. So, look, officials. That look, I know officials have a hard job. And official, but here's the reality. Officials can make mistakes, too. That's, everybody's they're human not, out there. They're not immune. We don't have robots. They're not immune. Nope. So uh, I think that the league na- needs to have a little conversation and say, okay, if it was taunting, why did you wait to throw the flag once you leaned back kind of into him? Why? I mean, why? He, he, he was already leaving what you considered taunting. He was, he was already done with it. Most of the time, when somebody taunts, as soon as the taunting action is, is initiated, yeah. the official looks at it, grabs the uh, yellow flag, and then throws it. Like if I was breaking away on a touchdown, which I often do, by the way, I, I w- if I pointed at you um, on the way to the end zone, that would be considered taunting. Throw the flag right there. Boom. There you go. Right at the, I mean, as soon as that point happens. If I held the football out in your face in the end zone, that's taunting. Boom, flag. Right? Throwing it. Immediately. Immediately. Not, Give me not when I run back to the bench. Okay, you go and you stick the ball in my yeah. face and you turn around and you walk 15 yards away and then I look at you and I go, oh, now I'm going to throw it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's one of what those. What are we doing? 
we'll see what happens with it. But uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, Football zebras, I think, is the the Twitter handle or something to that effect that has uh, an insight to a lot of officiating and, and all that. And they have all the the um, the referees' assignments for the week that they okay. announce on Tuesdays. So okay. that that came out. Did today. they make any comment about this call? I, I didn't look through it all the way. I just saw that Corinthi is going to be on the Jags game this okay. week. Okay, so that, there you go. Well, uh, you know, here here's what the league does. Mm-hmm. And this is not a joke. Okay, when you have some type of controversy, what's the best way to handle it? Put it on a, somewhere that's not going to get a whole lot of eyes. Oh. Okay. I mean, so, I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised that the assignment of Jacksonville at Indy was done on purpose because it's a – it's not going to be a game that's it's going to be broadcast Sunday night football. on 60% right. of the country. Yeah, Sunday night football, not, not doing it. Right. Let's uh, move along now to the Baptist Health Injury Report. Baptist Health changing health care for good. And, of course, Monday, head coach Urban Meyer discussed a few different guys that were nicked up last week. Trevor Lawrence, of course, with the lower ankle sprain. But sounds like, at least from what Urban said Monday, he should be okay. No boot or anything. Moving around. We'll ask um, Urban coming up in just a little bit and see what he has to say. Uh, James Robinson, same idea. Heel issue. You know, was going pregame, trying to go. Couldn't do it. Cam Robinson was one that, from all reports, came about 15 or 20 minutes before the game. His back just tightened up on Did he it. ever come out to the field? I don't think so. I never saw him. I don't think so. So wow. uh, Walker Little uh, had to go. And, and, and Urban said after the game it's happened to him before. Like, that's not a new thing for Cam. So hopefully he's back and ready to go. And, of course, they've added Jay Tufeli to injured reserve now. So uh, that long list continues on the right side. Maybe at some point in the next few weeks we might see Linder come back in the fold, it, hopefully. You know, because well, the knee thing's d- done now at least a couple weeks ago. The well, high it was ankle. A, it was, yeah, it was an ankle the, and knee. You know, I, I mean, know. typically – uh, the high ankle, I think, is like six to eight. Yeah. Right? Is that, yeah. I mean, time four to six maybe? Yeah, if you're really lucky. I yeah. think it's longer to six to eight. So, I mean, how many weeks is it now? It's it's we'll four? Push about five, four or five. Counting the right? bye? Yeah. Probably uh, five, five. Which game was he injured in? I don't remember. I mean, it was early. Um, really early. Week three? Uh, Tawan Taylor missed a block. I remember that. I want to say it was uh, Cincinnati? Either way, in the next month, you you might be able if if things are going well to him to to see him uh, back on it. Um, so um, apparently, oh, oh, it was that. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. F- we'll look out. it up. We'll I'll look find it up. out. Let's I'll take a look out. at the AFC South results uh, from this past weekend. Of course, around the division, the Jaguars, of course, knocked off the Buffalo Bills. We know that one. We were here nine to six. The Colts over the Jets on Thursday, forty five. 30, the final score. Jonathan Taylor with 172 yards. He broke away for a 70-yarder in that game for a score. One of two touchdowns for him. Carson Wentz threw three touchdown passes. And uh, the defense stood up big again for the Colts. The Dolphins over the Texans, 17-9. Tyrod Taylor for Houston threw three interceptions in his return to the lineup. The Texans haven't won since they beat the Jaguars back in week one. And then the Titans over the Rams, 28-16. Simmons on the D-line with six tackles and three sacks. Kevin Byard, we know him well, had an interception return for a touchdown for the Titans. And they don't need Derrick Henry right now. They could use him, obviously. But they came out and just beat the hell out of the Rams on Sunday night football. So we look at the AFC South standings after week nine. And as you would expect, Titans at the top leading the way and... Still leading the way by a good amount over the Indianapolis Colts. Tennessee seven and two, Indy four and five, Jacksonville two and six, Houston at one and eight. The upcoming schedules, well, they're as difficult as they have been, of course, in the weeks prior. The Jaguars uh, do not have a bye week the rest of the way. They've already had theirs. Texans on a bye this week. The Titans are against the New Orleans Saints this week in week number 10. That's in Nashville, Tennessee. And, by the way, uh, Linder was hurt in the Tennessee game. Ah. Um, so. Got it. If, uh, so, if he was hurt in the Tennessee game, I want to make sure I got this correct. Yeah. 
because he was placed on IR for the Miami game. So that Miami, so that's one week, two weeks, three, four. by week three, Buffalo four. So we're this on one, the fifth. We're on the fifth right now. So there's so. no official word on that. Just I was looking at the list and. You know, starting center. They're just trying to get an idea yeah. for, you know, when and if he may be back. You know, so, I mean, like like we said, you know, it can be six-ish, six-ish weeks mm-hmm. or more for a high ankle. So, at best, you know, maybe have a chance next week. Yeah. Maybe. Thanksgiving, you know. maybe more. more yeah, likely. so we'll see. All right, coming up next, the Urban Meyer Show. We'll hear from the Jaguars head coach as we do each and every Tuesday afternoon, getting his head about the Jaguars' victory over the Buffalo Bills That's coming up on the Jaguars radio network. This has been Jaguars Happy Hour on the Jaguars Hard Rock Sportsbook Digital Network. Own this thing. It's ours. Come on, let's go. Duval County in 904. Let's own this stadium. Make it ours. Welcome to the Urban Meyer Show. Urban Meyer Show. Meyer Show. Former Jaguar Jeff Lagerman and J.P. Shadrick discuss the latest Jaguars news with the head coach. The Urban Meyer Show starts right now. Welcome in the Urban Meyer Show, heading into week number 10. Recapping week number nine, though, a win over the Buffalo Bills. J.P. Shadrick, Jeff Lagerman, and Jaguars head coach Urban Meyer. A 9-6 victory for the Jags, the second win of the season. And to do it here at TIAA Bank Field in such a dramatic fashion, that was, that's was that got to be a good feeling for this organization. Well, a great one. And uh, I know I speak for Jeff and, and former players as well as our current players that the Buffalo Bills are known to travel well, and they did. And I was actually driving in and staying in the morning. I thought, oh, no. You know, and I saw nothing but the red, white, and blue stuff around. And uh, But I got to give credit to our, our fans were outstanding. I mean, they our players thrived off it. Uh, that The fourth quarter, the defensive stands, you know, you, you, you play for a lot of reasons. You're energized for each other on the team. But don't fool yourself. You also play for that crowd, and the crowd was awesome. And uh, – our vision of packing this place and making it one of the destination places, I'm telling you, we're gonna we're, we're working our tails out to make this happen. All right, Urban, I, I thought the game started out exactly the way all football games should start out. The 159th fighter wing of the Air National oh Guard goodness. blew the roof <laughs> off the stadium. Are you kidding me? How awesome was that? Awesome. Well, I'm a huge military guy because my family and everybody else, and I thought they were going to take out the scoreboard. That's how close <laughs> I, Charlie Strong and I looked. I go, oh, my gosh, you know. But that rocked the, that rocked the foundation of the stadium. Well, and then your defense just uh, played outstanding. I mean, so many guys really stood out, and a lot of people want to jump and say, "Oh, Josh Allen, this." But I mean, heck, Josh Allen, Rudy Ford, Smoot played well. Your defensive tackles played well. Everybody up across the board, I thought, played about their best game. Our two inside linebackers too, Jeff, played their best ball this year. Uh, Miles, uh, Jack, and Damian were all over. You know, we transitioned to more. We were 70-30 man zone, and we've transitioned ever since the prior to the Dolphins game. You know, we just couldn't. We, we uh, either made mistakes in va- evaluating what our players do best, but whatever it was, we just made a transition, and it takes a minute. Uh, very proud of our coaches, most insor- uh, importantly our players. I saw drills showing up in the game, you know, where you get your depth, you keep your shoulder square, and the ball gets dumped where Josh Allen, the Buffalo Bills Josh Allen, uh, does a great job checking the ball down. And we were like missiles to the guy with the ball in his hand. And Rudy Ford and the two linebackers, are I mean, you talk about guys going after the ball. They were fantastic. Yeah, a great tackling job on the perimeter, inside, and, and one of the things that you guys did, pretty aggressive, and a lot of people think or maybe have the misimpression that you were blitzing and playing man coverage, but you still stayed with the zone concept. A lot of the, the pressures that you were bringing were a zone blitz. Yes. And we, if you notice, we played some zone blitz with uh, two behind it. So the quarterback threw a couple times. Uh, I remember Shaq and I remember Tyson as well. You know, zone blitz a lot of time in the spread offense tells you to throw the bubble. We've done it. And then all of a sudden you throw the bubble and you got a hard corner right up on the receiver's face and you make a tackle for no gain. So uh, once again, uh, kudos to our staff, but more importantly, the players. Boy, they practice their tail off, and uh, um, it was a great game to be part of. 
Jaguars head coach Urban Meyer with us here on the Urban Meyer Show. Let's get to Josh Allen's performance. You know, the last few weeks, statistically, it's starting to come along for him, but he had his career day. Eight tackles, a sack, an interception, a fumble recovery, two tackles for loss. He can do a lot of those things. The stats are there. But it was across the board on the defensive line and at linebacker. Um, guys making plays in the middle of the defense, and then that gives Josh Allen room to go get home. And it's not coach speak. It's, it's real. When you're holding your coverage like our guys held, so you hear coverage sacks. Does that happen? Absolutely. Most sacks are coverage. In the NFL, very rarely you just beat a guy. Uh, and when you see a sack happen, it's because the first read, the second read, by the time a quarterback gets to a third read, against a good defensive line, you're in trouble. And that's what you saw Sunday. Well, and I thought uh, in some cases he didn't even get to a secondary. Taven Bryan, the first sack that he had, he had a, a really great swim move and, and beats the guard and gets a sack. And then uh, Roy Robertson Harris, who had been slowed by an ankle injury, I thought it was his best game yet as a Jaguar. And, and I talked to him, he's still, you know, he's still got to get that sack. He, he's about a step away. But the thing that Roy gives you, tremendous push inside, plus he's 6'5". And they were doing a much better job of getting their hands up and uh, being an a issue with the quarterback. So uh, you're exactly right. Uh, one thing that was, I thought, apparent, might, might not have been apparent to some, in past games, Urban, including Seattle, where you got caught with 12 men on the field, you would do almost these kind of wholesale substitutions with the defensive front. <coughs> I didn't see a lot of that against the Buffalo Bills, and that was a noticeable change. And it, and it seemed to give your defensive players – kind of the ability to lock in instead of worrying about, am I on the field or am I off the field? Is this guy lining up? Is that guy lining up? Did, did that have something to do with it? It sure did, and, and, and they worked at it, but it also, Buffalo helped us by, they're really much, pretty much one personnel grouping for most of the day. You know, the problem is when the people start coming in and out, and we're working to work hard on that because, you know, we, we were watching the Colts, and they play some 11 and some 12, but mostly 11, uh, which is one back, one tight end. Uh, but th we did work on it, Jeff, but also when the team sits in one grouping, it's a little easier. You mentioned Rudy Ford, you know, coming up and making tackles on the perimeter and all yeah. that. But now it's his third career start. He's been in the league a number of years, obviously a special teams uh, ace up in Philly and now here in Jacksonville, too. What went into that decision process to, to get him on the field at nickel? Well, he, uh, he he's the best coverage guy I've ever seen in kicking game. And when I say that, I say that with great respect to a bunch of my former players. I'm sure I'm going to get text messages if they hear that. <laughs> uh, but this guy is, is arguably one of the fastest guys, if not the fastest guy on our team. He is relentless. He's tough as nails. And he's uh, he works so hard. And so finally, you know, I went into our staff and we kind of made the change. And I know he's not a very experienced man coverage guy. He's learning to play man coverage. But he's one of our better players right now. And all I'm talking about, go ball, hit ball, see ball, you know, see ball, hit ball, that's what he does. And I know our fans enjoy watching it because he doesn't, he doesn't just hit you either. He accelerates his feet on contact. You saw the one where Josh Allen scrambled to his left and flicked the ball to that uh, running back, and the guy come like a shot, and it was number five. Rudy Ford knocked the ball out and, uh, you know, spiked the guy out of bounds, and uh, he's an aggressive player. And then on the one that Caleb on kind of slowed up the back with the old uh, clothesline move, and all of a sudden here comes Rudy Ford and the fast and furious. And on the uh, You talk about not very much experience in man. The interception I think he got against Cole Beasley stepping in front of him was man. Yep. And then on top of that, Urban, you're not taking him off of special teams. I mean, he made a kickoff coverage tackle. Uh, so an impressive outing by him. He played his guts out. Yeah, he had the IV after the game, and, you know, he's, his uh, calf's locked up. And, you know, he gives – I know the Jaguar fans appreciate it. He gives everything he's got for us. We mentioned Dewan Smoot. Let's get a little bit more into his game as well. And, you know, it, it just seems like he's Mr. Reliable. You, you know what you're going to get out of Dewan Smoot every week, and that's a good thing to have up front. Yeah, Dewan Smoot would be the first to tell you, and Josh Allen. This time last year, Josh Allen was, you know, under 250 pounds. And Josh is over 260 right now. He's stronger. Is strong. He's actually the way he works. First of all, but our sports performance team works with him. You know, our goal, my goal, was when, back in January. I told you, I, we're going to stay healthy the best we can. And as teams wear down during the season, the best teams I've been a part of that I've had, they're actually stronger by the time you get to bowl season in college. They're stronger when you get to December in the NFL, and we're on pace to do that. You know, we got to stay healthy. We had uh, 
that one time six starters out on offense, but it wasn't muscle pulls. It's stuff that happens that unfortunately in this game, but Smoot and to answer your question, Smoot and Josh Allen are benefiting from the off from the uh, sports performance. Urban will return in just a moment and get into the Jaguars' offensive performance this past week against the Bills. We're off and running. It's the Urban Meyer Show on the Jaguars Radio Network. Jaguars fans, here's a great way to pay with pride wherever you go. Exclusively from TIAA Bank, the Jacksonville Jaguars Visa Debit Card comes with a fierce look and fantastic features, along with the convenience to make purchases online or at millions of locations worldwide. And it's yours, free, when you open a Yield Pledge checking account. Order yours today. Visit TIAABank.com slash JagsCard. TIAA Bank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC, and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. We paid how much for those lessons? Shh. She's doing great. Oh, yeah, totally. Uh, can you pass me a Pepsi Zero Sugar? <sighs> great job, honey. Oh. oh, look at that. That's not the end. No way. Now it's time for the encore. You know what? You're right. Five times? Not enough times. For everyone who traded in rock concerts for their kids' recitals, you've compromised enough. Pepsi Zero Sugar. That's what I like. <sighs> Hard Rock Sportsbook is coming to Florida. Join the Seminole Tribe of Florida and Hard Rock for safe, trusted, and completely legal sports betting. Go to hardrocksportsbook.com to get all the latest details leading up to launch. Play remotely from anywhere in Florida, including on your phone or computer or in person at Seminole Casinos. Want great promotions like free bets, odds boosts, and bonuses? Hard Rock Sportsbook will have all your favorite bets and promotions. Hard Rock Sportsbook, the best place to be a Jaguars fan. Coming soon. Must be at least 21 and physically present in Florida to wager. Concerned about gambling? Please call 1-800-522. 4700. Great teams leave it all on the field. But with the powerful towing and payload that Ford F 150 delivers, you can take it all with you, too. No wonder Ford F Series is America's best selling truck 44 years straight. The 2021 Ford F 150, built for greatness. Visit your local Ford dealer or buyfordnow.com. Based on 1977 to 2020 calendar year total sales. Welcome back. The Urban Meyer Show continues along the Jaguars radio network. And Jaguars game day broadcasts are presented by Star Credit Union. The Urban Meyer Show continues. J.P. Shadrick with former Jaguar and Jaguars analyst Jeff Lagerman and Jaguars head coach Urban Meyer joining us. Let's flip it around to the offense you know, lo and behold, the offense runs out on the field for the first time. Wait a minute, where's Cam Robinson? He's not out there. You knew James Robinson wasn't going to play. Then all of a sudden, the starting left tackle's gone. They've got some injuries, of course, earlier in the season at, at on offense. That was a little bit of a surprise, I would say, before kickoff. Yeah, not a pleasant one. Uh, I really believe James was going to play, and James wanted to play, but he just could not push and make cuts off that heel. Um, you know, he had a good, I believe it was Thursday or Friday, and then Saturday it swelled up, and that was our alarm by our trainer. He was worried, uh, but I still thought he was going to play. And he goes out pregame, and he can't go. So that's one down. And then uh, after, actually after a warm-ups, we're, we're 15 minutes from game time, uh, they tell me Cam Robinson's out. I walk back in the training room. He's actually his back is locked up. Mm. And uh, I don't want to say he got an argument with Hop, George Warhop, but I thought, do we go with Will or do we go with Mark uh, – Walker Little. Walker Little hasn't played. Will Richardson has been pretty consistent. And he said, Coach, Walker's ready. And I looked at him, and I said, he better be. And uh, we're facing number one defense in the NFL. And he actually hung in there. He gave up one sack, one pressure. But he hung in there, and he played really hard. And he's, uh, we're really glad we drafted him, and he's going to be around here for a while. Yeah, Mario Addison, uh, a good football player that he was facing. And that might be the best way to get uh, to get your first start. You don't know until they say, uh, guess what, you're in. <laughs> that way you don't have any time for nerves in that situation. Yeah, I saw his face a little bit, and I, you know, I was wondering how the best to go about it. I, my I best way I know I handle is let George Warhop handle it and the offense line surround him. That's a pretty good group. You're down three starters in the offense line. It happened at Miami when we played Miami. Will Richardson went and played. It happened, you know, Brandon Linder's out. A.J. Can's out, and now Cam Robinson, one of the best, I think, one of the better left tackles. He's out, and our guys did a pretty good job. But we knew that. We, uh, 
you know, we I thought Bev and uh, Schott, Schottenheimer called a good game. I was involved in that because our defense was playing the way they're playing, and we need to take care of the ball and get some good drives going. The thing is we didn't score in the red zone, and we turned that ball over once in the red zone. And offensively, <clears throat> you guys knew that it was going to be a tough sledding type of day, what I call a lunch pail day, because the Buffalo Bills just so good across all three levels of defense, which is very rare to find in the right. National Football League in today's day and age of parity. Yeah, and, and we if you look back, it's you know it's a tale of missing a couple throws that, you know we miss a couple uh, and Agnew dropped a C.J. Beathard comes in, which is another story, comes in and drops a dime on uh, the defense, and Agnew's twenty out of twenty times he catches that ball. And he dropped it. That's a touchdown. Then we had a stutter and go by Marvin uh, Jones on the outside in the fourth quarter. That that's a sealer. It's over if he hit that, and we overthrew it. So, um, you know, we're growing, but we're playing complimentary football, which is the best kind of football to play. And that, that throw that you talked about to Jamal Agnew, the dime throw. I mean, he's got a defensive tackle bearing down on him and smokes him after he throws it. Yeah, got a flag. I mean, that's, that's an impressive play in and of itself. But I thought what was really impressive, Coach, is that you have your starting quarterback get hurt. He leaves the field, goes to the tunnel. Yeah. And when he comes back, he's ready to go back in. And he is like, I'm talking ready to go back in. Yeah. I love the game and I love the outcome, but you just found out your quarterback is tough as nails. Yeah, he, uh, I had to grab him. You know, he was running on the field. We already had a play call. And, and so I said, just, you know, I had to make sure he was warmed up and, you know, all that. Uh, you don't just throw a guy in right in the middle of a drive. So we got the first down and then we went in and put him in. But, yeah, the – the future is bright with Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, and then uh, C.J. Beathard comes in pretty much cold. Here he is. He's got to make some throws and keep the offense somewhat moving and, and steps in in a big moment and makes some big-time throws for you. Yeah, you go back to our oh, the whole process of that. You know, who's, who are you going to take as a quarterback? I wanted Alex Smith. You know, Alex Smith, I knew I coached him. He's a great veteran, and then he was unable to play, and then you – you're shopping around, shopping around, and we just fell in love with CJ because he's tough as nails. He knows the game. He's a great mentor. He's a great leader, and uh, we know he'd be ready on, on on call. Plus, he's a very accurate thrower. You saw that in preseason, so we got the right guy there. Uh, Urban, uh, one thing I think that uh, you can kind of see, even though the offense was a little bit of a struggle on Sunday, is that your, your coaches are starting to get comfortable with some of the personnel and some of the things that they're doing. First drive of the game, example, Jamal Agnew lines up in the backfield. And, of course, he's wearing a 39, former defensive back. And the Bills are matching up man-to-man. you got a linebacker, Edmonds, who ends up matching up on him. And it's a critical down. And he absolutely runs away from the linebacker. I mean, that was a great play designed by your coaching staff. And I think it indicates how much more comfortable they're starting to get. Yeah, well, we uh, Bev's that's uh, Bev brought that to us, and and you know it's a man coverage play. If it's zone, it's not a great one. And so I was standing right next to the official. That was a critical time, fourth and I think two or three. And I said, "Do you like it? Do you like it?" Then he saw the linebacker matched up, and so he went with it. And uh, obviously a big play, great accurate pass. And then if you really watch Agnew, you know, and once again fans and just people that love football, Agnew is one of the toughest cats. If you ever notice, he doesn't run out of bounds. He he cups the ball and we call it clamps the ball and he throws himself right into the defensive back at the end of that play setting the tempo of the game it's amazing to see what that guy's done in the last uh, two years changing positions here in the nfl (coughs) i know you talked about this on monday briefly but it's now tuesday we're a day closer to week 10 what's the latest the exact latest on james robinson and and cam robinson this week it's all positive uh we're gonna and so you have miles jack that uh is a little slowed right now just his knee but he's going to be good to go uh, you have uh, Cam. Uh, every indication is he'll be good to go. Just got to be smart this week in practice. James Robinson, I know he'll be good to go. Um, and Trevor will be good to go. So all good on the injury front as we speak Tuesday. That's the best news we can hear. We'll come back and take an early look at the Indianapolis Colts on the Urban Meyer Show on Jaguars Radio. On the road, there's a thin line between safety and tragedy. Don't cross it. Give law enforcement, first responders, and service professionals the space to safely do their jobs. When you see flashing lights, move over a lane or slow down 20 miles per hour below the posted speed limit. See lights? Move over, Florida. Brought to you by the Florida Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles and the Florida Highway Patrol. 
Scrubbing soon to a location near you. You know and love the Scrubble Stars at the Town Center, Fleming Island, and Atlantic Beach. Now get ready for four new locations scrubbing soon this year, featuring Kernan, San Jose, Racetrack Road, and Oakleaf. Give your car the glitz and glam it deserves at the best car wash in town with free car prep, vacuums, window cleaner, and more. You can also catch us at every Jags home game and cool down at the Scrubby's Misting Arch. Drive in to see us now and in the future at our Scrubbing Soon locations. Scrubbles, trust the bow tie. You'll know quality once you arrive. At ViStar Credit Union, you inspire us to deliver on our promise, to do good for our members and our communities. That's why we offer more banking options, like better rates and no hidden fees. We also give back, donating several million dollars to hundreds of nonprofits each year. Better financial lives, stronger communities. ViStar Credit Union, do good, bank better. Visit ViStarCU.org slash join, insured by NCUA. Jags fans, did you know you can ride your bike to every Jaguars home game at TIAA Bank Field in Valley Park it for free? That's right. Stop by our bicycle check-in tent sponsored by Alert Today Florida near Gate 1 at TIAA Bank Field. An on-duty Zencog bike professional will park your bike and ensure it's secure during the game. When the game is over, return your claim ticket to pick up your bike. For cycling safety tips, visit alerttodayflorida.com. Remember, alert today, alive tomorrow. Because safety doesn't happen by accident. Welcome back. The Urban Meyer Show continues along the Jaguars radio network. Welcome back. J.P. Shadrick, Jeff Lagerman, and Jaguars head coach Urban Meyer on the Urban Meyer Show. The Jaguars coming off a win over the Buffalo Bills. Have won two of the last three and now headed up to Lucas Oil Stadium in downtown Indianapolis. A 1 o'clock kickoff time in week 10 for the Indianapolis Colts at 4-5 and five and the Jaguars at 2-6. and six. This is a running offense in Indianapolis, Urban, with Jonathan Taylor second in the league in rushing yards, in the top five and many other categories. And, w- you know, we saw this firsthand, what, week 17 longs last year. He runs for about 230 on this team the last week of the season, and he's doing that again this year. He's a real problem. Yeah, I, I have experience with him in college. Uh, he played at Wisconsin. Very fast, uh, really, really uh, elite back. Uh, he's already going to be their fastest player. They have T.Y. also at receiver, uh, but he's not as uh, you know not as active as uh, their tailback. Uh, so he's the guy, you know. And obviously, uh, with a bad offense line, great tailbacks aren't very good. They have a very good offense line, and they their scheme they spread. You talk about spreading the field now. They use all 53 yards. Hey, what what was your history against him in college? You remember? Uh, sure. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just curious. Great respect for him, and okay. uh, yeah. Okay. Just no, good. he's a tremendous player. Well, I mean, he's a great back, but uh, don't get me wrong. But, uh, Urban, I mean, there's a lot of backs that they have on their roster having success behind that offensive line, right. and it starts with Quentin Nelson. This guy's an absolute stud. Uh, got an excellent center. The tackles, I think, are, are still on the way to being good. That's a really good offensive line, arguably maybe the best offensive line you guys will face yet this year. Yeah, the center is really good, too. And, and uh, uh, Quentin Nelson, I sat in his home in New Jersey and tried to recruit him. And uh, he's one that got away from us and uh, went to Notre Dame, had an you know, awesome fan. I just love the guy, and he's a rugged player. You know, uh, so a lot of respect for him. And uh, you're right, that's where it starts. Not, you know, uh, Jonathan has a great uh, year so far, but the backup's really good too. Yeah, the, the, the one thing they also do is the wide receivers block. And, of course, so many people don't think about wide receivers blocking in the running game and being a factor. But uh, I've been watching this wide receiver for the Colts for quite some time, Pascal, who went to Old Dominion University, which most people have no idea that's even – they even play football there. And he is, I think, one of the best blocking wide receivers in the league. Yeah, and I, I actually asked Trent about him, you know, because I never heard of him. And I, same, I had the same reaction on Sunday – or Monday, excuse me, when I sat and watched uh, about four games. I walked in and said, my gosh, this guy's a – he's a really good player too. Not extremely fast, but just, you know, he's a football player. And you can see that all, you know, damn near, darn near every snap. Head coach Urban Meyer with us. Carson Wentz triggers this offense, you know, and, and he, <clears throat> he hasn't turned the ball over a lot. A couple of the key moments a week or two ago it happened, but a guy who's been in the league now for a long time, and if he can manage this offense, he can be very successful. 
I actually talked to Sean about him and, and Trent when I first was hired, you know, what direction we're going and the quarterbacks, and, and I just have always liked Carson Wentz. You know, I, I remember watching him play for the Eagles. I thought he's tough, he's athletic, he runs, and he knows how to run an offense. So when the Colts, you know, I was real disappointed when I saw the Colts get him because I think he's a really good I've always thought he's a very good player. Flipping it over to the Colts' defense, number one in the National Football League. This kind of seems to be a theme. Last <laughs> week you kind of faced the same thing with the Colts have now 20 takeaways on the season, and leading the way is Darius Leonard, the linebacker, who seems to have taken that role from Peanut Tillman where he's punching that ball out, and he did it again this week on Thursday night. He's a good football player, and they play good defense. That really good defense. It starts with Buckner inside the three technique. He's a guy that you have to deal with, and then he's got a 330-pound uh, partner in the middle, number 90, that just uh, they play well and they are, their linebackers are excellent and their safety plays excellent too. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to playing a bad defense. I'm not sure when that's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not going to be this week. Uh, their no. defensive coordinator, I've had great respect for. I think he's gotten the most out of what they've had ever since that he's been there. Matt Eberflus, I believe, is his is his name. And uh, he seems to get the most out of everybody and gets that group playing hard. You know, the last two, uh, the Buffalo Bills uh, with Leslie Frazier, who I have a lot of respect for, and then this coach, very similar. It's, it's, it's a similar defense. It's not a lot of bells and whistles to it. It's just really good players at the three levels, and they know their defense and they play it well. It's not the chaotic, you know, where you're going to have guys all over the place. They're going to be a four down, four or three defense, and they play split safety and one high safety, and that's it. So uh, game planning, you ju it's going to be a lot about matchups. Going back to the, the forced fumble situation, 10 fumbles that uh, have been caused and, and taken away by the Colts defense this year, and, and Leonard's the guy that punches it out. What else do you say to the offense this week, offensive players, skill guys with the football? Do you, do you put an extra couple points of emphasis in this week to talk yeah. about ball control? How do you do that? Well, we're gonna, uh, we already had Bevel talk to him, and then we're also going to make a video clip of it to show prior practice tomorrow. Uh, and show and actually tell the defensive scout team players or practice squad players to be swinging at the ball, which our defense is getting better. They're, they're swinging at that thing constantly. Uh, but we better, you know, we better be locked down with the ball. And I, that's why I was disappointed. My biggest disappointment last week, we have red zone opportunities. And, uh, and we're not, you know, we, twice we walked away without points, missed a field goal, and then a fumble. We can't have that. Uh, one of the things that's uh, I think a joy to watch is the growth process of your young quarterback, and and he's getting better. But you know, just like the stock market, the growth never seems to be a perfect arrow going up. There's always ups and downs. What's the one area that you want to see the greatest growth from with Trevor from last week to this week? Yeah, uh, just third downs and hit, you know we can't miss them. You know, when we have this, you know, the NFL is so hard to get open. When you're open, you got to hit them. And, and I, I put the same challenge on the receivers. When you are open, you know, help your quarterback out. You know, I thought our tight end did. You know, it wasn't Trevor, but our uh, Dan Arnold uh, made a spectacular catch on the sideline. You know, that's expected. That's not – you're supposed to do that. We had – I can count three or four times, and I even went over to the sideline and kind of got after him. We need, you know, help the guy out. How do you help the guy out? Make your play, man. Get open and make your play. Coach, final thought here, coming off a winning result last week. After the first win of the season, there was the bye week. And now it's back-to-back -back games, getting back to work. What do you expect the mood in the building to be this week in that locker room and, and the focus moving ahead to Indianapolis? I already saw it today. You know, I, well, yesterday we had something called Victory Meal, which is a new tradition we brought here to Jacksonville. And that's a, a very nice dinner. You play the highlights of the game and a little fellowship. And, and then they get out of here. But I, I walked around. That's my best time of the day is to walk down the train room and the rehab room and talk to players. And we don't want a bye week. We want to keep going. And uh, i got to be smart how we practice, take care of these guys, and make sure they're full speed on uh, Sunday. All right, so sports performance model. we got the victory meal. What might be on the menu there? Uh, I always tell people it doesn't matter because we call it victory meal. I'm going to enjoy it. They can put whatever you want. But it's, <laughs> it's, it's Jeff – you are personally invited to the next one. It's All really right. good. Wait, wait a minute. What, no, what was JP, that? you're down the road. Do we, Jeff. <laughs> do we do we have maybe a ribeye cap on Victory Meals or yeah, something? Yeah, there was like a ribeye. There was a ribeye last night, I believe. Yeah, ah, it was really good. Wow. a little lobster mac and I cheese, like I think. It. Yeah, so, I like that. JP, you're out. Jeff, you're in. <laughs> <laughs> maybe one of these days. We're about halfway through the season. Urban, thanks for the time. We'll talk to you. Thank you, Head Coach Urban Meyer. We're back with more on the Urban Meyer Show on the Jaguars Radio Network.
Jaguars fans, here's a great way to pay with pride wherever you go. Exclusively from TIAA Bank, the Jacksonville Jaguars Visa Debit Card comes with a fierce look and fantastic features, along with the convenience to make purchases online or at millions of locations worldwide. And it's yours, free, when you open a Yield Pledge checking account. Order yours today. Visit TIAABank.com slash JagsCard. TIAA Bank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC, and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. At Tropical Smoothie Cafe, one taste and you're feeling good now, smiling wider now, seeing brighter now, bucket dunking now, namaste in now, popping a wheelie now, living lighter now. You're on Tropic Time now. And on Mondays, try our Jaguars Duval Delight Smoothies for $2.99. And you're roaring louder now, end zone dancing now, sipping spirit now. You're on Tropic Time now at Tropical Smoothie Cafe. Hold on. You want me to tell them about Twisted Tea Hard Iced Tea in just 30 seconds? This is impossible. Hey, I'm Billy from Twisted Tea. How can I explain that first sip of cold, smooth, real brewed tea? So good! And the extra kick you get from just the right amount of alcohol? <laughs> the twist of lemon, the... Wait, what? We're almost out of time? Oh, sh**. Twisted Tea Hard Iced Tea. Look for the bright yellow cans wherever you buy beer. Twisted Tea Brewing Company, Cincinnati, Ohio. Please drink responsibly. Jaguars fans are gearing up and saving big at Fanatics.com the world's largest collection of officially licensed fan gear from all the leagues, teams, and Jaguars players you love. Shop the most trusted brands, exclusive designs by Fanatics, and autograph collectibles from today's biggest stars. Join Fanatics Rewards today and earn fan cash on every purchase. Shop now and get today's special offer. Fanatics.com, officially licensed everything. Welcome back. The Urban Meyer Show continues along the Jaguars radio network. Welcome back. The Urban Meyer Show continues. J.P. Shadrick, Jeff Lagerman, and our thanks to head coach Urban Meyer joining us in the first half hour every week here on the Urban Meyer Show on the Jaguars radio network. And I guess I'm just going to go starve, Logs. I mean, I'm just going to continue to eat crumbs. If J- I'll tell you what, here. J.P., I'll get you a to-go box. Yeah, great. Thanks. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Reheated ribeye. Oh, well, I'll take it. Lobster mac and cheese, Whatever ribeye. <laughs> uh, and I think it's pretty cool, though, that they do something like that. You know, it's it's, uh, it's cool. It, uh, look at, you know, it's, a, it's a good way to kind of enjoy the great side of football, which is winning. And it's a way to build camaraderie. So I like that idea. I like I like the, the concept. And uh, But here's the critical thing. Yes. The food's got to be good. Well, yeah. Because I mean, you if you do it, throw and the food there, is no. junk, okay, it ain't going to work, okay, because the players in the National Football League, they've got, I don't want to say highbrow taste buds, but. No, they, well, they can, they, yes, they, they do. They, they, I mean, they got <laughs> personal chefs and all this other stuff. Yeah. So you better make sure the food is good. Yes, and I'm, I'm sure it is after a winning result last week. I, m- maybe I won't know personally for a while, but that's okay. I, I, no hard feelings, uh, Urban, of course. Now, another thing that was interesting, what he said, we're talking about Carson Wentz, the Indianapolis Colts quarterback, and he said that he was disappointed when the Colts got him. Yeah. They were t- kind of looking at him a little bit, it felt like. Well, I, th- I get the impression that uh, having you know, and knowing that there's a relationship between Carson Wentz and Frank Reich, that that's the place if Carson Wentz was going to be able to bounce back and revive his career, that would be it. And so I think any time that you have that kind of thing happen in your division, you're always kind of like, gum it, wish he'd gone somewhere else, you know, because that's the <laughs> best chance that Carson Wentz would have of kind of getting back on track. And and he's been solid. He hasn't been great. But, uh, but Carson Wentz has been good. But it's kind of interesting that he alluded to the fact that uh, – you know, I don't want to say that they were interested in him, but it certainly gave the impression that they were following what was going on with him. Yeah, kick the tires. I don't know about kicking the tires, but at least just kind of look at the label on as the if, window. As yeah. if maybe, okay, yeah. do we consider signing a guy like that? We know we're going to be able to draft Trevor Lawrence. We know we're drafting Trevor Lawrence. Is this a guy that we can have in-house as – as somebody to help groom Trevor Lawrence to maybe play for a little bit until he's ready. I mean, I don't, I don't know what the thought process was, but uh, 
but but interesting comments that he had and and very honest. I like that. Yeah, I mean, yes, but and that's the thing, with Urban, on, on shows like this, press conferences, we've seen and heard him throw out, the, you know, what he thinks a lot of times or what he doesn't know about right, right, things. Right, he's right. been forthright on a no, lot it's, of it, He's been good, and um, he's been good uh, on his show, and, and he's definitely – I don't want to say he's an open book, but uh, but he, you know you ask him a good question, he's going to give you an honest answer, and I, I appreciate that. Let's come back. We'll take a look at this Jaguars offense, and we're going to get some answers out of you. <laughs> You've been asking for answers for a while, JP. I'm going to keep asking. Hi, JP, here's here's the one positive thing. Last week you told me that that I was going to give you answers for that Jaguars defense, <laughs> and I think they answered it for you this week. <laughs> It's about performance, execution, and making sure that you're ready to go. Okay, that's the defense. We're, we're going to call it offense, though. we still got questions that we need answers okay, to. Okay, well, some of those answers might not be available until... Oh, well, don't, don't kill the whole segment. We're back after this. It's the Urban Meyer Show on Jaguars Radio. On the road, there's a thin line between safety and tragedy. Don't cross it. Give law enforcement, first responders, and service professionals the space to safely do their jobs. When you see flashing lights, move over a lane or slow down 20 miles per hour below the posted speed limit. See lights? Move over, Florida. Brought to you by the Florida Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles and the Florida Highway Patrol. Pinpoint, the official signage partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars, helps business decision makers like you maximize the impact of their brand. Your company's identification, advertising, and even the words you use make an impression on your clients. With Pinpoint as your coach, you can make sure it's a good impression. Pinpoint provides the creative design and production services for anything you need to enhance your brand, from custom signage to complete marketing solutions. Step up your game with Pinpoint and create the ultimate brand experience for your clients. Visit experiencepinpoint.com. Are you a Jags and a pet fanatic? Then enter for a chance to win your very own customized jersey and answer game day trivia live on the TIAA Bank Field video boards at an upcoming Jaguars home game and our pet fanatic of the game, Sweepstakes, presented by Pet Paradise. To enter, scan the QR code on the Sky Patio or go to jaguars.com slash fanatic. Terms and conditions apply. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited. Must be 18 or older and a legal resident of Florida or Georgia. At Tropical Smoothie Cafe, one taste and you're feeling good now, smiling wider now, seeing brighter now, bucket dunking now, namaste now, popping a wheelie now, living lighter now. You're on Tropic Time now. And on Mondays, try our Jaguars Duval Delight Smoothies for $2.99. And you're roaring louder now, end zone dancing now, sipping spirit now. You're on Tropic Time now at Tropical Smoothie Cafe. Welcome back. The Urban Meyer Show continues along the Jaguars radio network. We're back. The Urban Meyer Show rolls along. J.P. Shadrick, Jeff Lagerman, Jaguars head coach Urban Meyer with us in the first half hour every Tuesday on the Jaguars radio network. Coming off a dub. The Jags have won two out of the last three. They're on to Indianapolis to face. You know, everything's a, perspective. Uh, right. Right? No, you the can, Jaguars have won uh, two out I, of their last three. Was I incorrect? Or you can say the Jaguars <laughs> won two out of, out of their last 23. That's right. But I didn't. Hey, let's, we're going positive. The but glass I, I is like half it. full right I now. Like okay? I like it. I like the positivity. Fix the offense, Logs. Go. Uh, you got to have the growth of a quarterback continue to happen. you got to acquire more talent around him. And you have have to have better execution. It's pretty simple. That's it, huh? It's easy. Oh, that's it's easy. Okay. It's all about perspective, I guess, though, right? <laughs> okay, right? I, I do know this, and that uh, not having James Robinson, and this is, you know, I mean, I mean Captain Obvious right here, okay? Well, uh, not having James Robinson <laughs> hurt significantly. Really? And uh, the, the wide receivers and the quarterback both need to do a much better job. There's not a lot of separation. There's, the coaches have to do a better job. They, they need to get and re, re, 
uh, find what they had earlier in the season, but maybe not to that degree, and that they were aggressive and vertical. And they backed off on that a lot because the turnover machine was just getting out of, out of hand with Trevor's interceptions. But you still have to have that element of the game. It works. And, and I think that they have – I don't want to say they've shied away from it, but they've backed away from it a little bit. Mm-hmm. But you still have to have it. You know, obviously the stutter go with Marvin Jones Jr. was there. That's a vertical element of the game. You had a, a deep ball to Jamal Agnew that C.J. Beathard threw. That's a deep ball. But you got to start connecting on some of these things because it it becomes harder and harder. The less you attack the vertical part of the defense, it becomes harder every week to be able to have success mm-hmm. because the defenses don't respect it. Yeah, if you don't have to. If you're not there. attacking it, no. if you're not forcing them to cover the entirety of the field, it becomes harder as an offense. Now, do you believe there's some offensive minds coordinators that think you know what we're going to take six shots a game no matter what, throw it down the field? Al Davis. Right? I mean, the, I mean, the late Al Davis. No matter if we hit him or not, just to back everybody away. You take the late Al Davis, and he would walk into his coach every week, I'm sure, and tell him, throw the ball deep. Six times a game, mm-hmm. and I don't care, because if you don't do it, I'm going to fire you. That <laughs> he would. And right? he would. Yeah, sure. I mean, that's – look, I mean, Al Davis was a smart man. I mean, it wasn't like he was just a meddling owner. Al no, Davis no, he, knew football. He coach, yeah. And absolutely. the reason why he wanted a vertical element to his offense, no matter who the coach was with the Raiders, was because he was right. You have to have that type of element to your offense. So, uh, can the Jaguars find it? I mean, they got they got to find a way. Um, and, and here's the thing. They've got to, they've got to start trying, trying to find different solutions in my opinion. Okay, what I mean by that, okay, you've tried Tavon Austin. Mm-hmm. You haven't had a lot of great success with him. Okay, you've tried uh, the wide receiver that they just signed last week to the active roster, well, Laquan Treadwell. Treadwell. right. Okay, have you gotten many results out of, no. out of that? Uh, no. Tyron Johnson. No. Another one. Was inactive this right. past game because, you know, uh, in Seattle he had some mental errors and he's got super speed, but if you, if you have mental errors, you can't play. So – I think the next step is is to say, okay, it's not working here. Let's try a different possible solution, which means elevate one of your practice squad guys. Okay. You know, Cotton, okay, bring him up. Uh, you got another guy on there that was with you in training camp uh, from Florida. Josh Hammond. Hammond, okay. Let's give him a shot, mm-hmm. see if he's going to do anything. You know, I mean, it, it comes a point to where you've got you to try something different, I think, if it's not working for you. And uh, and we'll see what happens. Maybe they do. All right. So the, one of the big national stories today around the NFL, the, the waiver wire came through at 4 o'clock. Odell Beckham Jr. was not claimed by any team. And for the first time in his career, he is a free agent. Would you dare? Why or why not? Uh, would I? I would absolutely have a conversation with him and his people. Because he's a, he's a, he has been – exceptional I mean exceptional and he hasn't been great recently in Cleveland in fact uh, you can see that uh, him and Baker Mayfield exactly or weren't exactly on the same page and I don't think there's a any love loss between the two of them uh, Odell is one of those guys that wants and expects the ball that can be a problem at times uh, is he a diva he's about as close of a thing at the, as you can get to it but can you handle that personality? Typically, to handle a personality like that, you have to have a very strong locker room. Do you have a strong enough locker room? Do you have a strong enough foundation in your building to handle a guy like that? That's a challenge. Yeah. And so that's got to be a big consideration to, to figure out whether or not you want to have a guy like that come in or not. And it's just over $7 million bucks, and there's, he wouldn't probably be ready to go this week. So eight games remaining, a rental, basically a one-year deal. Mm-hmm. And there's no guarantee he's going to be back after this season. That's no. you know a lot of money going out the door. I know there's room and salary cap, but it's still real money going out the door well, for eight games. Uh, you definitely kick the tires. And – because the the last thing you want is you know it, because he, you didn't want to you know claim him on waivers because then it could be a problem. Yeah, if he doesn't want to be here, doesn't want to be here, doesn't show up. Yeah, you right. know, then you're you know looking at a a major problem. Yeah. 
and you don't want to have that. So you want to have people, you always want people that want to be here. And so do you have a conversation with him now? Yeah, you got to find out whether or not he wants to be here. Well, there's reports earlier today that his number one choice would be the Packers. Well, he, he wants to play free. for a proven quarterback. Oh, has a chance to win. And to play for a contender. And I don't blame him. Everybody wants to do that, to play for a team that's got a good chance of winning at all. Who wouldn't? Especially when you're a veteran player and, and you're going to have the ability and the flexibility of determining where you want to go because you're going to be a free agent. No, your, I'm not mad at him. No. Shoot. I mean, no, look, that's, that's the whole point. I mean, Free that's agency. why the system is there. Yeah. And he goes through the waiver pl- process. Anybody could have claimed him. Nobody did. And probably smartly so. And so now he will be able to choose where he wants to go and what money he wants. Now, he's not going to be able to determine what money he gets. He can say whatever he wants. But, you know, Green Bay may be his – desired destination but green bay may say hey we'd love to have you but here's our number yeah and it may not match to what he wants you know so Mm -hmm. he's going to have to make a determination at that point Uh, is it is he comfortable with it and okay money okay and because this may be part of the decision it may not be the money may be great that's right to go to a contender but then again, the money may not be. And I misspoke. The seven million would have been if they claimed him. Seven point two five. Now it's free. It's now a it new contract. Matter. Yeah. So whatever matter. and whatever would be the case. All right. Well, uh, when we return, we'll go on the defensive side. You gave us a lot of answers last week, and they came through and followed them to a T and got the win. Now it's about moving ahead on the defensive side of the football. That's all coming up in just a moment. And this is the Urban Meyer Show on the Jaguars Radio Network. Jaguars fans, here's a great way to pay with pride wherever you go. Exclusively from TIAA Bank, the Jacksonville Jaguars Visa Debit Card comes with a fierce look and fantastic features, along with the convenience to make purchases online or at millions of locations worldwide. And it's yours, free, when you open a Yield Pledge checking account. Order yours today. Visit TIAABank.com slash JagsCard. TIAA Bank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC, and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Great teams leave it all on the field. But with the powerful towing and payload that Ford F-150 delivers, you can take it all with you, too. No wonder Ford F-Series is America's best-selling truck 44 years straight. The 2021 Ford F-150, built for greatness. Visit your local Ford dealer or buyfordnow.com. Based on 1977 to 2020 calendar year total sales. Any repeated physical activity puts stress on the body. Checking your phone, getting in the car, sitting at your desk. Checking the phone, getting in your car, sitting at your desk. Checking your phone for the 50th time today. If you do anything with regularity, you should get massaged with regularity. Massage Envy. Keep your body working. Regular body work makes the body work with massage, skin care, and stretch. Come in today for more information or visit MassageEnvy.com for more details. Hard Rock Sportsbook is coming to Florida. Join the Seminole Tribe of Florida and Hard Rock for safe, trusted, and completely legal sports betting. Go to hardrocksportsbook.com to get all the latest details leading up to launch. Play remotely from anywhere in Florida, including on your phone or computer or in person at Seminole Casinos. Want great promotions like free bets, odds boosts, and bonuses? Hard Rock Sportsbook will have all your favorite bets and promotions. Hard Rock Sportsbook, the best place to be a Jaguars fan. Coming soon. Must be at least 21 and physically present in Florida to wager. Concerned about gambling? Please call 1-800-522. 4700. Everyone's so busy keeping up. Forget about the Joneses. We all on our telephones with the texts and the tweets and the beats. What he said, she said, can't even follow the thread. Down the hole, we all go. Me, I like keeping up too with my corona and my attitude. That's La Vida Masfina. Relax responsibly. Corona Extra Beer. Imported by Crown Imports, Chicago, Illinois. We paid how much for those lessons? Shh. She's doing great. Oh, yeah, totally. Uh, can you pass me a Pepsi Zero Sugar? <sighs> great job, honey. Oh. Oh, look at that. That's not the end. No way. Now it's time for the encore. You know what? You're right. Five times? Not enough times. For everyone who traded in rock concerts for their kids' recitals, you've compromised enough. Pepsi Zero Sugar. That's what I like. 
Welcome back. The Urban Meyer Show continues along the Jaguars radio network. Welcome back. J.P. Shadrick, Jeff Lagerman, Joe Fortunato, Brent Reber. Glad you're along with us on the Urban Meyer Show today. The Jaguars head coach joining us in the first half hour every week at 5 o'clock here on the Jaguars radio network. Logs, you uh, gave us some answers last week on defense. Hmm. And the Jaguars defense went out there and and did it. They um, they stood tall. They 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 stared down the top scoring offense in football and held them to six points. Pretty sacked good. the quarterback four times, took the ball away three times, and they had two all season coming in. I mean, this was it was almost like they were you know embarrassed and uh, by the performance in Seattle, like Miles Jack said. Well, it was a it was a great great defensive effort. Uh, even you hold uh, a high-powered offense like that to essentially what was season lows across the board, you know, points and yards and uh, efficiency of their quarterback. Uh, it, w- it was all great. Uh, you get, uh, like you talked about, you get three takeaways as a team against a team that had only turned the ball over five times on yeah, the entire right. season. Yeah. Uh, those are all great numbers, and uh, and that's what it took to win. And. The, the Jaguars played aggressive, and that's what you got to do when you're playing a good team when you haven't been playing well there. I think they were aggressive from the standpoint of they went for it on some fourth downs. They played an aggressive style of defense, and they brought some zone blitzes, and uh, and they just played hard. And I think that's the, the number one thing is that if you play hard, you always have a chance, and they played hard. Is that type of performance sustainable this week? Can they do that well, same thing again? I mean, it's a, I mean, it's a Colts team that can run the football. It's hard to say that a, a performance like that is sustainable, and it's hard to believe that it can be. But here's the thing. You've now shown to yourselves that, that you can play at that level. Yeah. And that if you play well and do this and do that, then the results can be there. And I think that's, that's so important for the confidence of any team, and I, I think that's the best aspect of that performance. Okay, now you know you can play every week, every Sunday, you can compete against anybody. You know, so that's the most positive aspect from that. Now, will they come out and hold Indianapolis to six points? I mean, that, I mean that's, you know, come on. That's not easy to do uh, against anybody. And so, but I think this is a very good matchup this week. Uh, for the Jaguars, one, you're coming off a game where I think you've gained a lot of confidence. Number two, the Colts have a quarterback who needs to be a manager, that needs to have a strong running game. And the Jaguars are very good against the run. And, and, you know, one thing that I think is impressive, the Jaguars' defense last year was 30th in the National Football League against the run. 30th. Yes, they were. That's not good. There's 32 teams. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> You're genius. I know. That means they're not good. <laughs> they're they're twelfth this year. Twelfth, yeah. That's that's significant improvement. Last yeah. year they had eighteen sacks on the season. What do yeah. they got this year? Fifteen? I mean they're up there now. They're getting close. They got I'll yeah. tell you what they got. Uh they've got fifteen. Yeah. So it's good. I mean, look, they they've improved on defense, there's no doubt about it. They've got to still continue to find ways to affect the quarterback, which has been haunting this defense all season. But they did it against the Bills and against the best number one scoring offense in the league. They did. Uh, by the way, the, the run defense, you're right, 12th in the league overall. But per running play, they're third in the league. That's right. Under four yards per carry allowed. Now, that can all get skewed in a hurry, as we know, against a guy like Derrick Henry because he can rip off an 80-yarder. Well, Jonathan Taylor can do the same thing. Yeah. If you let him get loose, he had a 70-yarder last week on Thursday night. You know, he's a guy, and he's done it against this team before. Last season, uh, week he's 17. He's a big back. He's a, he can run. He's got it all. I mean, yeah, he's, he's, he's got a, speed and everything. He's 228 pounds, I think, 230, something yeah, like that. I mean, he's not Derrick Henry. No. It weighs in at, you know, 247, 250. But he is, he's got power, he's got speed, and he's got size. And those are three great combinations for a running back. And, uh, and I like the way he handles his business. You know, he's a kind of a quiet, confident, doesn't, uh, doesn't talk a lot, lets his play speak. 
and uh, and look, the Colts have a another good back that's kind of in their stable, and that's yeah. Marlon Mack, who really can't see the field because this guy's so good. And they got Naheem Hines in the passing game yeah, out of the backfield. Yeah, he's a receiver some, yeah, more he's, than he's, he is anything. Right, he's had more success catching the ball against the Jaguars historically. Yeah, but hell, he, he had <laughs> he had six carries for seventy four yards. I'm, Thursday. I'm saying you said he was, yeah he last Thursday night he was pretty good. Yeah. They were all pretty good yeah, Thursday words, night. When you Jets. score, when you score forty-five points, everybody's doing everything right. Yeah, the, you know, I, the, the one thing I'll say about that game is, uh, uh, first of all, I've, I've always been a fan of Robert Sala. You know, he was here, he was here. linebacker coach here. Uh, he got that Jets team to fight back. You know, to to where, where it wasn't a complete boat race. They, they didn't quit. Over, yeah, they didn't quit, and they fought back, and they fought back hard. And so I give. The Jets credit, and I give Robert credit because, you know, he's the leader and he's the one that gets them to play like that. PRI Productions, the Southeast full service event company, has everything you need to bring your next idea to life. Visit PRIproductions.com and learn more. We're back in just a few moments with our final thoughts on this Tuesday afternoon. It's the Urban Meyer Show on Jaguars Radio. On the road, there's a thin line between safety and tragedy. Don't cross it. Give law enforcement, first responders, and service professionals the space to safely do their jobs. When you see flashing lights, move over a lane or slow down 20 miles per hour below the posted speed limit. See lights? Move over, Florida. Brought to you by the Florida Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles and the Florida Highway Patrol. It's been around longer than your quarterback. When you put it on, everyone knows it's game time. So legendary, it deserves its own Hall of Fame. Members only jackets, undeniable quality and style for over 45 years. Scratch and claw your way over to membersonly.com. Get ready for football season with a jacket that can only be summed up in one word, iconic. Use discount code Jaguars at checkout for 35% off on all iconic racer jackets. Members only, when you put it on, something happens. At ViStar Credit Union, you inspire us to deliver on our promise, to do good for our members and our communities. That's why we offer more banking options, like better rates and no hidden fees. We also give back, donating several million dollars to hundreds of nonprofits each year. Better financial lives, stronger communities. ViStar Credit Union. Do good. Bank better. Visit ViStarCU.org slash join. Insured by NCUA. Scrubbing soon to a location near you. You know and love the Scrubble Stars at the Town Center, Fleming Island, and Atlantic Beach. Now get ready for four new locations scrubbing soon this year, featuring Kernan, San Jose, Racetrack Road, and Oakleaf. Give your car the glitz and glam it deserves at the best car wash in town with free car prep, vacuums, window cleaner, and more. You can also catch us at every Jags home game and cool down at the Scrubby's Misting Arch. Try then to see us now and in the future at our scrubbing soon locations. Scrubbles, trust the bow tie. You'll know quality once you arrive. Committed to the team, committed to the mission. At Navy Mutual, we're committed to providing high quality life insurance to members of the military and their families. So our policies have no fine print and no military service restrictions. We don't work on commission. We're nonprofit, so we pass the savings along to our members. Because at Navy Mutual, our highest commitment is to you. Visit NavyMutual.org. Navy Mutual, ensuring those who serve. Jags fans, did you know you can ride your bike to every Jaguars home game at TIAA Bank Field and Valley Park it for free? That's right. Stop by our bicycle check-in tent sponsored by Alert Today Florida near Gate 1 at TIAA Bank Field. An on-duty ZenCog bike professional will park your bike and ensure it's secure during the game. When the game is over, return your claim ticket to pick up your bike. For cycling safety tips, visit alerttodayflorida.com. Remember, alert today, alive tomorrow. Because safety doesn't happen by accident. Welcome back. The Urban Meyer Show continues along the Jaguars radio network. We're back. This is the Urban Meyer Show. <laughs> J.P. Shadrick, <laughs> Jeff Lagerman. <laughs> <laughs> Final moments of today's program. The Jaguars face the Indianapolis Colts in week 10. The division rival 
Uh, Tennessee's division to lose, I think, right now. The way they played on Monday night, my goodness, yeah, they impressive. went and slapped the Rams around. I, I, I kind of kind of like the Jaguars Buffalo game. I wasn't expecting that. Oh my gosh! In L.A. Wow, on their I, turf. I think anybody was. I mean, uh, without Henry and the whole thing. I mean, credit oh. uh, credit to Tennessee and, and Mike Vrabel, who I think is a, is an excellent coach. I mean, he he does a good job. I mean, he does a really good job. I think. I think he's one of the one of the better young coaches that there is in the league, yeah. and he's winning a lot of football games with without a premier quarterback. The Colts, with that performance on Thursday night, couldn't gain any ground. I mean, they're three games back, and uh, we're about halfway home in the division. And no, oh, you know, they, and they've already to lost yet. twice to Tennessee. Hey, the, the, so the, the door is not closed. I know it's not, but they they got to start making up some ground in the next little. And they, you know, if you're a Colts team. Defending your home turf this week, key against a team that's still trying to fully kind of figure things out. And the Colts get a little extra rest. That's right. Remember, they played, they played on, Thursday. on Thursday night against the Jets, so they they should feel much better. Jags by 40. That's my prediction. Okay, great. Yeah, I'm all for it. But here's the thing, JP. They haven't scored over 23 points I, in I'm the just game telling this you, I'm, <laughs> This is the one, Logs. I'm all for it, but uh, – <laughs> <laughs> They've got to find a, a few more answers on offense before they start worrying about scoring 24. I agree. Um, our thanks to head coach Urban Meyer. Logs, have a great week. We'll Thank talk you. to you, man. That's Jeff Logum and our entire crew, Joe Fortunato, Brent Reber, I'm J.P. Shadrick. This is the Urban Meyer Show on the Jaguars Radio Network.